All right, folks, this is Harris Sultan and TikTok time to rock. <laughs> David, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, Harris? I hope you uh I hope you got permission from apostate Aladdin to be doing this show right now. We don't want any uh angry videos made about you, you know what I'm saying? I um he he is the biggest motivating factor behind I speaking with you for the first time on my channel. And you know what? After the whole Apostle Aladdin saga, I, I got to ask myself this question that why haven't I invited David Wood yet? And then I couldn't put a finger to a single reason. I was like, um, is it because I found him hard to reach out to? And, but then I was like, no, he's, you know, we follow each other on Twitter. And then is it because I thought that he's too big to come to my channel? I'm like, nah, he's been a supporter for of so many ex-Muslims over the years. So it can't be that. And then I thought, was it because... Uh, I was under this sort of uh, untold pressure or um, th th that an ex-Muslim atheist should not speak with a Christian. So the moment I thought, if, has that been the reason? Then screw this. Let me send him a message. And I sent you a message and, 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 and you, you responded straight away. So I have a little bit of a different outlook towards this whole outrage, this moral outrage by certain ex-Muslims that all oh, atheists or ex-Muslim atheists should not speak with Christians. Um, I, I have spoken with many Muslim apologists, and some Muslim apologists and I have a very good relationship, like um, uh, especially off air, especially behind, um, behind the camera, where, um, and I'm like, we are encouraged by other ex-Muslims to, to start a dialogue with other Muslim apologists. We, they, they tell us, good on you, well done, go do it more. But then why, why, why do they have this hostility towards Christians, especially with those Christians who have been nothing but help, helpful and, and, and supporting? Moreover, you've never, you know, you've never tried to preach your Christianity to me. So I, so I find the whole thing. And, and, and then on top of that, I also think I've always said that not all religions are equally dangerous. And... Um, and to be honest, I actually don't find, I, I don't mind Christianity or Hinduism or even Judaism now, because I think they are in a state uh, that, uh, where they're not harmful. If anything, we might need a little bit of that just to just to keep everything in balance. Uh, yeah, and j just so you know, what, what's going on, what you see with the, uh, <clears throat> with the sort of new atheist, uh, sort of like it's it's become a, Lots of the ex-Muslim community are in the are also in the new atheist community. But but what's going on as far as um, <clears throat> everyone has to be part of their group, and you can't uh, you can't you know really have any sort of serious uh, ongoing uh, relationship or collaboration or something like that with that without you know with people outside of your group. Uh, that's going on with everyone right now. Everyone's going through the exact same thing. Um, it could be. It could be harsher for certain groups, but everyone, everyone right now, because of what's going on in the world, and we could, we could, I, I, I can actually explain all of this, but um, because of go what's going ahead. on in the world, oh, you want you, you yeah, yeah, you, want the, you, you want the you want the longish detailed answer, about ten minutes long. That's okay. I, I oh yeah, 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 yeah. I can no listen problem. to you all day. I, I could, I could crush it in a couple. So oh, here's here's what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> All right, Harris. Uh, wait, how old are you? You don't have to say if you don't want to, but what's your age? Range? I'm 28. Whoa, you are young. Okay, so yeah, you don't. I'm 40. You don't I'm 40. I just turned 40. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Never mind. All right. I'm still young. <laughs> okay. Okay. You may. You may remember then. You may remember then. Um, if you go back, if you go back to like 1980s, 1990s, uh, the world was a completely different place in mm. the West, and. Uh, I think of it in terms of like two zones. I'm going to call it friend zone. So friend zone is here and fight zone is here. And I don't mean like actual locations you're going into. I mean, your brain, your brain acts very differently when you're in a conflict mode versus when you're in a calm, everything, no one's attacking me type mode. Right. So back in like the eighties or nineties, you know, you could just be in a dangerous area where you're, it's not like this. So if you're in an area with lots of gang activity or something like that, then you would not be, you would not be in a friendly mindset. But for, for, for lots of people in the West, 
you, you get up, you have, let's say you have breakfast with your family, you drive to work, you're listening to some music, you go to work, you do your job, you're chatting with people at the water cooler, you go home, you watch your favorite TV shows. When are you actually like in a, in conflict, in a, in a fight mode? Uh, not only like, you know, an election might come up or something like that, and that might get you into some conflict. You might get into an argument here or there, but like most of your time is your, your brain is pretty calm. You don't feel like you're being attacked. You don't feel like you're at war. Well, you know, you fast forward a little bit of time and now every second of every day has to be filled with uh, some sort of conflict. You wake up and you check social media and you find out what you are, are supposed to be enraged about and who's attacking you uh, that day. You um, you go to work and now your office is politicized and you find out what issues you have to subscribe to now or you're going to be you know, in trouble and you go home and it's just you jump on YouTube or something like that. It's just conflict, conflict, conflict. And that changes the way you think. It changes the way you act. And as far as what's going on here, the most real, as far as matter of fact, this is like if I had to list the biggest problems facing society that could actually destroy civilization, this is this is one of them right here. What happens when you feel like throughout the day that you're being attacked, the tendency, the tendency is to join a group. It's like a wolf. A wolf can live on its own. But if a, if a wolf is in any sort of danger, it will, it will lump up into a pack. Once the wolf is in a pack, uh, group dynamics take over and then you have a role in the pack and you have to demonstrate your your worth to the pack and so on. So anyway, so the tendency, if you feel like you're being attacked by this political group or this, uh, you know, these racists over here and everyone's, everyone's attacking you, the tendency is to join a group um, that is going to uh, give you a, a support network. And so you jump into that group. Now keep in mind, but even when you're in, even when you're in friend zone, everything's going nice and uh, you're calm. You could still be in a group, but the the your relationship with the group is different. You're there because you want to be there. You want to be around people who have you know similar ideas and values or something like that. So you're joining this group. Uh, when you're joining up with a group because uh, psychologically you feel like you're being attacked and you, you know there's strength in numbers and you want to be part of a group, then the the relationship changes. Right now, you have to be demonstrating your worth to the group. And the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to agree with all the ideas of that group. And that's why you can take like uh, a conservative or a progressive or whatever, and someone can enter that group and check back with that person, you know, uh, five months down the road, you can list 20 different things that are seem like they're completely unconnected. And that person will fall in line on every one of those issues over time, because if you if you join that group and then you disagree on something, you're like, hey, I'm not sure about this one. The response is, oh, my goodness. Are you sure you're one of us? How do we maybe you're part of the other group? What's going on here? And so you can't question it. So you have to fall in line on every single issue. Um, but what happens is once groups start polarizing, the tendency is for people. So let's so let's say you have two groups right here. You can just think of it in politics, like left and right or something like that. You have two groups. Once you set yourselves up as the group that's against that group, then people within the group start climbing over each other, basically, to get to show that they're further and further away from that group, right? So you and if, if this if this represents all the people in the group, you don't want to be here and be really close to that group. You want to be you want to show how valuable you are by being more extreme. And so the result over time is people push each other in their groups further and further away and any sort of any sort of common ground or agreement with that other group you're actually the you actually may be an enemy of your group because you're actually siding with all these uh with all these other people and so uh the the long term result of that is now you no longer have a society where of people who share common ground and have certain disagreements now uh, here's my group. There's your group. We're we're in perpetual a perpetual state of hostility and antagonism right now. And I cannot side with you because then I'd be agreeing with uh, with a Nazi or with a socialist or something like that. And I'm not going to have any sort of uh, common ground with that. And so that's happening to everyone right now. And so uh, also to ex-Muslims. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, everyone's going through that. Yeah, and with with the with the ex-Muslims, it can it can actually be a couple of it can actually be a couple of factors. So it might actually be a bit stronger there because. Um, 
it's just like you, you can you can be an ex-Muslim and some people can recognize that Muhammad's a false prophet, but they still believe in God and they still like Jesus. And so it's, it's natural for them to they might veer towards Christianity or you might just say, wait a minute, I believed all this stuff a lot. And I was told by these religious leaders my entire life that these things were true. It all turned out to be complete nonsense. I'm done with this stuff. I'm just done with it. I don't want to I don't want to hear any of this stuff anymore. Just shut up. Just everyone trying to control me and, and put these ideas in my head. And so that, you know, the natural tendency there would be to go into, you know, atheism or agnosticism or something like that. But you, there can be other things that can carry over from that. So for instance, if you're a Muslim and it's, hey, you know, I, I have to win and everyone who disagrees with me has to be crushed into submission. Uh, if, if, matter of fact, that's a, one of the peaceful verses that Muslims uh, would quote back in the day when debating a Surah 60 verse 8, that Allah doesn't forbid you from you know getting along with certain people if they're you know, wow. no troublemakers. So they'll quote that. And I always point out, just go a few verses earlier. And it says that uh, it, it holds up Abraham as an example because he said to the pagans, uh, until you agree with me that there's no God but Allah, there is endless endless hostility between us. And it sets as it set, sets that up as an example. So until you agree, there's endless hostility here, but you can have that mentality and then come to reject Muhammad as a prophet and say, I don't believe in that guy anymore, but you can still have that mentality of everyone has to agree with me. And there's endless hostility between me and anyone who disagrees with me. And so, uh, and keep in mind, anyone from any group can, matter of fact, all groups pretty much will have, will have, will have people like this. I mean, Islam really encourages it. So some people who leave the Muslim uh, community might carry that, uh, carry that sort of, it's just a more, it's just a more like aggressive mentality. And they, they might carry that aggressive mentality over here, which can then combine with stuff that's going on with like group dynamics in the West right now. And the result is everyone has to become increasingly polarized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone has to become increasingly polarized. It's my group, and and by the way, that that's that does that's not going to stop. That's not going to stop. Uh, that, that, was, a, that was my next question. That do you think that that's that's only happening because we so, social media is a new phenomenon? Well, about twenty years old or fifteen years old, but once things calm down, we'd know how to deal with this. And then you know, like throughout human history, we've we've found a way around things. Even you know, like the, when we invented nuclear weapons, like oh, hang on. The, a, a lot of pundits at the time thought that this is going to become uh, the new norm, uh, but it didn't happen, thankfully. Um, so now with social media, as you said, we are in this perpetual state of division and subdivision and subdivision. We keep and we're becoming more and more polarized. I have this hope. Obviously, I don't have any tangible evidence uh, to conclude that maybe this is just one of those temporary phases where we are the way we are why we're acting so with, with such hostility towards people with different views, but eventually things will calm down. So you don't think that things will em eventually calm down? Uh, they, they could. I would find that pretty surprising just because social media gives too many people, too many opportunities to mass manipulate uh, other people. In fact, uh, what, what, matter of fact, Throw once, in artificial intelligence as well. Throw in AI as well in that and, and, and see how that's true. that would impact. Because that, that might make people help make better informed decisions, don't you think? Uh, yeah, yeah, poss possibly. But here, here's, what I here's what I actually think. So once, uh, as I was pointing out, that uh, now that everyone who just wakes up all day, every day is in conflict mode, um, and... and Keep. I mean, you go to a grocery store. You go to a grocery store. You can't. And you can't avoid your brain turning into into fight mode. And what I mean there is, you go in there and you see Bud Light. It doesn't matter which side of that issue you're on, right? If if you if you love Dylan Mulvaney, right, like right when it came out, right when right when uh, Bud Light did the Dylan Mulvaney thing. If you love Dylan Mulvaney. If you if you see a display and you and you know other people are have a problem with Dylan Mulvaney, your your mind just switched. You're not there getting groceries anymore. Your your brain just went into into fight mode. Like who's going to disagree with me here? And it's the same like every issue that could arise. Now your brain is just in a in a, a state of of constant conflict. But uh, I mentioned that so the tendency is to for people to click up, and once you click up and set and establish what you're against, then you're going to become more and polarized, more polarized because you're going to have to push further and further away from the other group that you've set yourself against. Uh, so you have that going on, but also now that you have a group, and that now that that group demands complete allegiance to its uh, to its ideas, or you'll be cast out of the group. 
once you have that situation, you are you're going to have narcissists and psychopaths and people like that enter into that issue, like you see in Dawa, right? You you see in Dawa, you see who's who's taking over the Dawa scene? Complete narcissists who are there for attention, right? They insert themselves into a dispute, and they rally people around them. Usually, good some some charismatic figure or something like that. They enter the situation, but once they do that, then guess what? It is way easier. It is way easier to mass manipulate people mm -hmm. by doing that than it is to convince everyone that you're right. So do you want to, do you, would, you, would you prefer, what's easier here? Going person by person, giving them your arguments and reasonings and saying, there, see, this is why I'm right. Or just, hey, here's what someone in our group does. And if you don't agree with this, then you're not part of the group and you're terrified of not being in the group anymore because that's your protection. Way easier to get people to uh, to agree with you and adopt any position you hold. Then, and guess what? It can even be completely against people's. There have been studies on this. People will do things completely against their own self interest, as long as they believe that that is what someone in their group uh, does. So I see that. I see what's. I see the ability that that social media gives to kind of uh, to amplify that sort of thing. Apart, I, I see. I see two. I see two paths that uh, that I think are more likely than everyone just calming down after their brains get fried from all this stuff. I would prefer that everyone calms down, and, and but uh, the more likely paths are if you cannot if you cannot handle if you cannot yeah if you can't get along if, if society starts breaking down then you're going to end up with a tyrant who cracks down on everyone and crushes everybody because mm -hmm. if you can't be controlled from within then you're going to be controlled from without. Uh, the only, the only, th the thing that I would love to see that would actually fix this is if, if people become what are called hard targets, right? A manipulator can spot someone who could be manipulated. If he tries it for a while, it doesn't work. He gives up on that person. That person's a, a, a hard target. If people basically learned everything that's going, if they learned the basic manipulation strategies and how people are using them, then maybe they wouldn't fall for them so easily. And so if, if, if it became a general feature of society that people knew how to avoid being man mass manipulated by groups or journalists or whoever it is, then maybe you wouldn't have these kinds of problems. So I, I actually, I actually sit back and think maybe I should just be making videos about manipulation tactics so people can understand them and uh, not fall for these kinds of things anymore. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Looking pretty at the rate Bleak. at the rate, the rate at which everything is fracturing. Keep in mind, it, it, it never stops, right? So you have a group, let's say you have a group, the new atheist, the new atheist. As long as the new atheists are focusing on everyone else out there, then they can kind of have a, they can have a kind of solidarity. Uh, the longer that goes and the bigger and, and uh, less threatened the group feels because, you know, let, let's suppose they, you know, th their numbers go up tenfold or something like that. Uh, the, the more they will turn and, and look within then they're going to start seeing other people in the group they disagree with. And it might be something like, uh, hey, we can't get along with, with that Christian over there or that Hindu over there. And, and someone else says, what are you talking about? Of course we can. We we, we agree on certain things. We don't want to be subjugated by uh, Islam. So we agree. Um, you can actually split the group. And then that, that group can split. And that group can split. And then everything is just a bunch of little fractured groups everywhere with no common ground on anything. And that is a civilization that's either going to fall apart on its own or or be crushed by something that comes well, along I, from outside. I hope eventually things will calm down. Now, you're one of those people who actually pointed this out to me, obviously not directly. I, I was watching one of your videos. I'll, I'll come back to that. But um, I was obviously, I've never made it, made it a secret that Richard Dawkins had the biggest impact on me. He pulled me out of Islam and I became an atheist and... I was a groupie of the this new atheist movement. Um, and then I think even at that time, well, back in those days, everyone used to ask Richard Dawkins and, or Sam Harris or these guys, or Christopher Hitchens, that, oh, if you don't believe in God, if you're going to remove God from society, where are you going to get morality from? And the answer was always the same, reason and intellect. Um, so I think... He, so smart people like Richard Dawkins, et cetera, they just, they just assume that everyone... Um, it's going to be reasonable. Everyone's going to be intelligent and everyone's going to agree on some sort of a best explained explanation of anything. But that didn't happen. Um, so what that created, um, anyone can have any opinion and as long as he can justify it in his mind, he can start propagating it 
And then not only he can start propagating it, obviously at that point, social media was still new as well, but he would be able to propagate it on a scale that has never been witnessed before in human history. So the result of that is wokeism. Now, I am all of a sudden thinking, wow, where did we go wrong? And here's where you where you come in. I think you've, I don't know how long you've been making this point, but I think I heard you make this point maybe a year ago or something, where you said something like, oh, the new atheist promised this new scientific utopia. If the if religion is gone, then we're going to have this scientific utopia. That didn't happen. And that forced me to think that, like any other society, and this is... This, Maybe I was a bit dogmatic about my atheism as well. Because to me, like, oh, Muhammad believes in flying donkey. Hindu, Muslims believe in flying donkeys. Hindus believe in flying monkeys. Christians believe in, you know, water turning into wine, etc. They're all stupid. They're all stupid. But I always recognize that not all religions are equally dangerous. And why would it be unfair for me to judge all of these religions equally if they don't have the same negative impact on their respective societies islam has cannibalized everything islam just islam only respects power it, it destroys all opposition whereas all these other cultures gave rise to to an environment or whatever through, through wars or whatever it ended up happening the, the world we live in today christians are not that dogmatic christians do not force their christianity on other people how how they got their i don't care i'm only more i'm more interested in the world that i'm living in and then on the other hand, we see the same thing with Hindus, we see the same thing with Jews, and so many other cultures, Buddhists, etc. They're not as hostile as Islam is. So why should we, um, you know, why should we judge them equally? So with the with the rise of wokeism, that got me thinking that maybe we need a bit of traditionalism, maybe we need a bit of um, religion, maybe because. Like in any society, you need a, a, a strong right, you need a strong left, and most people are in the middle, and they usually, you know, they they usually get swayed. And now those dynamics have changed as well, as we discussed. The social media has just made it a lot easier for bad forces to manipulate masses on a scale that we've never seen before. Um, and this October seven, that was another wake up call that I can see how bad arguments are mass produced online and people just fall for it and who are falling for it the blue-haired young wokies they're the most susceptible to falling for bullshit so maybe we need a counterbalance maybe we need something that just keeps things in check now if you privately believe in whatever i don't care as long as it doesn't impact my life now there is another argument too from uh, the strong atheist side they would say well religions do have this propensity or tendency to force itself even subconsciously for example in america we had this roe v wade uh, by the way that's the only example and i'm obviously i'm not in favor of that being an atheist i'm pro-choice um and to me as an atheist i think that maybe that's just a temporary phase eventually it would go back to uh, um, choice so to speak um but on the other hand this wokeism is destroying our culture like never before. I mean, I'm, I, I hope it's just a... So anyway, so my point was like, I think you're right. And all those people that I used to laugh at at the time that wants you to remove religion, even though I don't believe in religious morality, but I think people have proven now that people are stupid. People are easily manipulatable. Mm -hmm. Putin can set up a call center or, or whatever with, with a thousand people and they can... They, and he can spread his propaganda on this mass scale where people in America, they're so stupid that they start romanticizing Putin and they start crapping on their own country. And and, and Osama bin Laden and Hitler now yeah. and everyone here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're showing Hitler's speeches and they're saying, well, what's so wrong about what he's saying? Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it, it, it's mind boggling. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, anyway, I, I, unless you have something to add on, I think there's something. Oh yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. Go, yeah. Go. So I, I want, I wanted to point out what, uh, so what you mentioned that I was saying, uh, a while back, um, that, you know, people like Richard Dawkins and so on, they seem to have this idea. Religion is the problem in society. If we get rid of that, then we'll, you know, things will work much better. Things, even if it's even if the goal is not like scientific utopia or something like that, that could be an exaggeration. But things are going to work much better if we just get religion out of the way. 
And then so, OK, so you've been doing that for for two decades now. You've been n numbers have been dropping to where um, like UK is no longer a Christian majority country anymore. And so, OK, how's that working out? How's that? How's that working out? But uh, what I was pointing out there as far as you, you can understand why this is. I mean, imagine I was just talking about this with AP in our last live stream, I think. So it, imagine like you've got Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris and Daniel Dennett and Christopher Hitchens, and they're all sitting in there and they're drinking, they're drinking wine going, look, look at, look at, uh, you know, look, look at how, look, we don't need religion. What do we need religion for? What do we need religion for? If we and see what, what's the difference between us and how we get along and how we analyze things and all those other people out there. Well, religion is the difference. So if we just got, if we get rid of religion, everyone's going to be like us. And it's just not, it's just not true. It's, it's just, it, it's, that's not how things work. But that is a mistake that everyone makes, right? The Westerners made the exact same mistake when they're like, hey, let's get rid of Saddam Hussein. And then freedom and democracy will flourish. And because we think, oh, everyone over there is just like us. What worked, what worked for us here in the US? Well, we didn't like that tyrant. King George, let's just get rid. Let's just get rid of him, and then oh look, freedom and democracy they flourish, and so we tend to think everyone is the same out there, and it's the same issue with like uh, with mass, you know, uh, uh, mass immigration and so on. Because hey, what what's what's the problem taking all these guys from uh, Pakistan over here? I mean, everyone's everyone's basically the same, and you find out no people uh, people actually aren't the same, and so <clears throat> we're we're kind of we're we're reaching a we're reaching a, a period where, okay, you guys, you, the new atheists, you made some serious, uh, you predicted certain things that just don't seem to be working out at all. So we're going to head in a scientific direction. Here we are five years later, and all of a sudden we can't figure out what a boy is. We can't figure out what a girl is. That doesn't sound like the scientific uh, utopia that, that we were aiming towards. And so it, it's a period where people who were, a, who, people who were atheists and were who bought into that 20 years ago or 15 years ago should be thinking, okay, what's, what's, what's not working here? Something is not working, but whatever we thought was going to work, it's not working. So yeah, but maybe, it's not all bad, yeah, though. maybe we need to. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right, but it's not all bad though. Like, I mean, yes, we have this wokeism, we have uh, all kinds of crazy things that are happening, but we certainly do have more tolerance towards, let's say LGBTQ. We have certainly more tolerance towards even atheists. I know, Atheists did not face death in the West for, um, I don't know, for how long. Um, but still, it was difficult for people to come out of a Christian family that, hey, I'm an atheist, and without getting disowned or having some sort of a uneasy relationship with their parents. So so things have improved on so many fronts as well. But yes, you're right. It's not perfect, though. What You kill one monster, proverbially speaking, not, not literally, but then, but then you give rise to something else. For example, like you gave an example of Iraq. Iraq... Iraq's war, Iraq war was unjust, but Iraq war has yielded best results out of any American wars in the last 60 years or something. I mean, there's still democracy there. It's still there somehow, like whatever it is. And let's hope that it evolves to a point that it becomes a functioning democracy. But then you know, on the other hand, Afghanistan war was just, in my opinion. And look, it didn't happen. Like, even after 25 years later, we didn't achieve anything there. So, so I mean, it's not all bad. Wouldn't you agree that? Uh, I would agree that it's not all bad, but any benefits that you see, I do not believe are going to last. So any any improvement you see in terms of, let's say, tolerance towards some group, I think that the the fracturing of society is is ultimately going to destroy that. So so How if so? you How if you happen? if you well it, well just just look at it. So just look at it. So you have tolerance for some people um, going up. And then you have hostility growing towards those exact same people from other groups. And as they become more and more polarized, that the people who are on that side are going to, you know, cling to them and the people who are on the other side are going to become more hostile. So, and as things fracture more and more, I don't know, it, it just looks like it, yeah, it looks okay. like it, it, well, I, it I doesn't guess look like it lasts test. to me. <clears throat> okay. Well, I, I guess that's our next test. And that would be an interesting time to make a prediction. I think that eventually things will balance out. Like uh, that's a good point that you made. That yes, okay, we've got uh, more tolerance towards LGBTQ people, etc. But then the kind of hostility hostility that we see towards Christians or religious people, um, that's just you know that that's uncalled for, and that's obviously can't be justified. You can't be that hostile towards ordinary Christians who don't know who mind their own business, they don't do anything, they're already on the on the back foot. 
Um, but then again, like if if this side relents a little bit, then we're going to have more Roe v. Wade and uh, hostility towards LGBTQ. So I guess I hope I'm hoping that societies have a way of balancing things out eventually. And maybe this is why I believe that maybe we're going through this um, um, this transitional phase. But I genuinely believe now that we need some traditionalist as well. I've been accused of being a far right. <laughs> I'm, I'm far right too now, just because. Um, I'm like, hang on a second, Israel has a right to defend itself because I have seen my own growth, how I was willing to give concessions to any country on earth but Israel. Israel, the, the way we are raised as Muslims, even after becoming ex-Muslims, we're just not willing to accept that because your starting position is Jews are bad, they, they usurped all this land from innocent Palestinians and they've been killing them day in, day out. That's it. That's your starting position and then you try to See, and, and I can understand why it's so difficult even for ex-Muslims to just be a little bit more empathetic. I mean, these people say, oh, you're, you're, you're not empathizing with Palestinian people, although I am. I've, I've never made a disparaging tweet or post about Palestinian people. My, my hostility lies with this Muslim diaspora that keeps on egging these people, uh, keep, keeps on egging on people to just keep sacrificing mm -hmm. your kids. We'll keep giving you support, you know, uh, till the last uh, drop of blood. Yeah, my hostility is towards them. Um, but I say that, why don't you empathize with Israel? Like, I mean, the, the, the best question is, if that was your country, what do you think your government would have done? It's easier to say for Biden now that, oh, don't repeat the same mistakes that we did, we, we made. Well, every country will make the same mistake every time it's attacked. Because if you don't respond, then you're left with, um, uh, the, the, then you open yourself up for future attacks. But anyway, that's a whole, you, you just recently came back from there. Um, any, anything you want to say on that topic? <clears throat> oh yeah, on, on that issue. So you've got uh, you now some people that that Hamas had a lot of support there from lots of ordinary citizens, and so these are people who are some supporting some really bad ideas. But I mean, you have, and and I, I'm not I'm not completely condemning. If you are actually there and you grow up there, I under I understand you would probably have a different perspective on things than I do. If you grew up in Gaza where anytime some guy throws a missile over there, boom, your house gets blown up in, in, in response. Uh, I might not, I really might not like Israel too. And I might be supporting, matter of fact, I mean, let's be honest, if I grew up in God, I, I would probably join Hamas or something like that. Would have probably, would have probably happened. So you, I have to be aware of certain things like that. But you, you know, at, at the end of the day, you also have people who, I mean, you've got tons of people there who would just like to live ordinary lives and not have to be in this endless cycle of violence. You've got Christians there who are like that. You've got Muslims there who are like that. Um, if uh, I, I'm sure that you do have some some of the same uh, statistics with atheists, where it's estimated that like five to ten percent of people, even in Muslim countries, are actually closet atheists. You probably have some of that there. There are probably lots of people who just want to live normal lives and send their kids to school and things like that. Um, and so the, the the issue that's presented to us is, well, why aren't you supporting them? Well, as far as I can tell, I am, because as long as Hamas is in the picture, this endless cycle of violence doesn't stop. And those people are never safe. And so you get you have to get rid of the jihadis. You have to get rid of the terrorists. And I would say, as you pointed out, <clears throat> with all these, you know, people around the world, Dawa guys and everything, just cheering this on keeping it in their minds, in the minds of the people of Gaza, you can actually ev eventually win this because we've, we're having rallies around the world. So you can eventually win this and eventually wipe them out. You're keeping that idea going. So they keep supporting the groups who are going to go out and uh, and fight the Israelis and so on. If they didn't have all these cheerleaders, this global network of cheerleaders cheering them on, and instead people said, guys, get used to it. You're not, you're, you're not taking back Israel. It's not happening. If, if, if that became the message, live with it, have your own place, build it up, keep building it up, and until after after a while, and and we see there's there's no terrorist attacks and so on, then then you can have your own country. It would it would be very different, um, and so it's it's not a situation where I'm just like oh, I don't care about the Palestinians. I want I want what's best for the Palestinians. I I hope that things work out for them, but. Israel has to be kind of relentless and ruthless in eradicating Hamas for there to be a, uh, a a future hope for these people. And so, and I also I also know I also know that the moment you start talking about 
the uh, the Palestinian Christians or the, the you know the the Palestinian Muslims who uh, who just want peace or something like that. That will be used by manipulators. So that will be used by a manipulator to say, "Oh, see, you you're you're concerned about that guy. Well, you have to you have to condemn Israel." And uh, wait a minute, condemn Israel for what? For going after Hamas? So you're you're now using them. You're now using people's concern for civilians and for innocent people and for women and children. You're using that to say, let Hamas get away with it. Okay, I don't believe that helps those people at all. It's it's all, it's all short term. Short term, yes, a ceasefire right now at this moment would save lives right now. That does all that does is encourage this cycle of violence to keep going. So if you're thinking long term, you, you got to get rid of Hamas. And that's why I stay kind of focused on on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, lots to talk about on that topic. But uh, Darth, Darth Funk, uh, thank you for becoming a member. I think you've brought some members, uh, David. Um, Stop Scamming Man has been a lifelong supporter. And uh, he has a comment to make regarding the whole... <laughs> AA saga. I have watched Apostle Aladdin's content since it began, and he's and he's certainly not one for attacking something to virtue signal. His criticisms are given with the best of intentions. Do you do, do, do you want to do you want to give your opinion on that first, David, and then I'll give my opinion. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I was actually assuming at the beginning, but then when he was like, uh, he mi completely mis when he when he um, when he him. misrepresented AP's tweet about uh and said that ap is uh what's they call it dog whistling to white supremacists and so on when he was making when he was actually making fun of them um yeah there there's where things shift and it's like i don't know because i didn't know anything about the guy but i i mean i would assume that people are doing this i actually i mean i understand the mentality because you're pointing out what you're pointing out is uh okay christians aren't Christians aren't trying to kill me and Hindus aren't trying to kill me and so on. Okay. But there are people who actually want me dead because I'm an, uh, you know, I'm an apostate now and something like that. But so I also maybe... don't have a problem with your values as well. But I also don't have problems with your values as well. No, no, that, that's not what, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying you can have different perspectives. Like people are jumping on AP. Ah, you sitting there hanging out with Christian week after week when you, you're supposed to be going after them too. And it's like, says who, why do I have, why do I, why suppose, suppose I, I don't care what anyone believes at all. So in other words, let's suppose an atheist says, I don't care what anyone believes, except if someone's trying to kill me. So you could have that position or you could have a more generalized problem with religion and saying, ah, but it's always going to be, you know, encouraging superstition and things like that. And so it's all bad. It's all it's all going to be a problem. Uh, even if they're not trying to kill me, they're still influencing people to, to think in certain ways. That was my position. So you could, yeah. So you could have a you could have a general a general uh, opposition towards it or something like that. The The issue is like. One group will say, no, the other guys have to be on the same page. So, hey, me, I have a problem with religion in general. You, you only have a problem with the religion that wants to kill you. And you can't be like that. And it's like, I mean, wh uh, who who made you the leader of of me and, and my views? But, but I mean, keep in mind what I was saying earlier, that once you're part of a group, once you're part of a group, then people start setting the rules for what's allowed in your group. And, oh, this, mm. guy's, this guy's out of the picture. And so, now, fortunately, uh, apostate, uh, apostate uh, Aladdin, he doesn't doesn't really have the clout at this point to just like fracture the entire community or something like that. But that that sort of thing could happen. He's, people will use it. Say, hey, here's our group. If you're in our group, this is the position you have to hold, and we'll attack you if you don't. Unfortunately, the, I don't think this attack is is going to work very well. But um, work for him. yeah, so yeah, so oh, long story short, I understand from from his per I understand from his perspective if his view is. I, I think religion in, in general is, is problematic and we need to keep, we need to hold, stay the course and keep going after that. AP's not doing that. He's acting like best buddies over here. What's wrong with this guy? I have to point this out. Yeah, I, under, I understand it all. And I can, I can, you know, assume that he doesn't have any evil intentions just with some of the things it's like, it, he didn't seem to, he either didn't understand anything AP was saying when he's, when he's uh, commenting on this stuff, in which case you should probably, not be comment, not be uh, criticizing people if you don't understand what they're saying, uh, or he does and he's he's being he's being deceptive with it. So, but either way, it's either way not not terribly interested in what he says after that. I was very charitable to his position as well, but I have seen some ex-Muslims 
doing similar things like embarrassing your so your, your supposed allies you know uh, even if you don't see him as an ally until you actually come out and take a position against him or condemn him then the, then everyone else assumes that you guys are allies yeah so i've had some people like I, and i and i use the example of reason and faith I mean, you probably don't even know him um and i'm like who is asking you, you you're just coming out you're just with someone who has a much bigger voice than you, someone who has to live with the consequences of Dawa guys and the, all these Islamists um, uh, making fun of, and you, here you are with your tweet that let me appear so fair. I'm I'm an, I'm a Mr. Nice guy, you know. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna give you my t ten cents on that. You do that, okay? What, did you get? Did you achieve anything out of that? So I I also look at these things strategically as well. It, the reason why I. I do think that he's suffering from that this syndrome of uh, you know virtue signal because everyone is these days. Every everyone thinks that you know there are these massive the Barack Obamas of the world or whatever. You know they have to just give give an official statement on a certain position. Nobody's asking for it. If you feel like you're so important, I think they're also suffering from the self importance syndrome that I'm so important I have to make my dispute public. He could have asked this question. He, he could have sent a list of his uh, grievances with AP privately. I don't think pri AP would have changed his view, nor AP would have managed to change Aladdin's view. But then Aladdin would have said, hey, look, this is a common, decent thing to do. And I've done that so many times with so many people. And you know what those people say? I, I, and, I, and I've told uh, in, in the Rudus I, I told this woman that, hey, look, you know what? My, a lot of people are asking me about you, about your alliance with so-and-so group. Um, you and I are supposed to be friends. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna make a video, and I'm just gonna distance myself from you from this particular position of yours. And she said, "Harris, go for it. That's okay. Thanks for letting giving giving me a heads up." And guess what? I still have a good relationship with her, and and we just don't have. Um, I, I just don't. And everyone knows that. Okay, I I don't. We don't share um, um, a same view on that topic. So I I, I feel or, like or what, one one yeah. more one more way to go about it would be uh hey AP I have a disagreement with you. Could we uh could you come on my channel to go live and have a discussion with it or could I come on your channel to I have a discussion with it and for that. For, would have been would have been for that. <laughs> and that's what I mean. It's like okay if you think you have an actual if you think you have coherent points and and criticisms um how why would you why would you not want to put them out there with the person and think that you can hold your own and if you don't then i don't know seems weird yeah i, I think that's what it was so <clears throat> so i I, th I think it was just an unnecessary uh, thing that he did and it backfired and a lot of people it, it fractured his relationship with other people <clears throat> and i've heard that he's asked a lot of people to come on please come out and speak in my favor oh <laughs> why i picked up from yeah. this from you <laughs> yeah oh and <laughs> just to way. in in his in his defense, because everything I'm saying here, when you know, if I criticize the new atheist for something, I, I you know, I, I'm pointing out, hey, everyone's going through some of the same issues right now. This is uh, everyone's going through th some of these kinds of things. Wow. And so, as far as uh, as far as uh, Pasta Aladin, uh, you know, that's something I catch I've caught from Christians over the years. Um, uh, Why do you not sit with an atheist? So <clears throat> Yeah, it, it's not so much that they'll actually they'll actually quote the Bible: "Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers." Oh. Um, and it, it, they just, it's, it's kind of massacring the meaning of the verse. The meaning of the verse really? is if you're, you know, if you've got, if you've got two oxen that are yoked together, then if one's bigger and stronger and pulls one in a different direction, you got to kind of, you're going to be kind of pulled. It's about morality, right? Like if, uh, uh, don't be, it's like, don't, don't, don't be, uh, don't be partying with a bunch of, uh, unbelievers and letting them go. Hang on a second. Behavior. But wouldn't Muslims say about that verse then <clears throat> the same thing that do not take Jews and Christians for friends because they're friends of each other. They will take you in their group. Isn't that what they're saying? W would you criticize well, them I as mean, well for that? I mean, they can say whatever they want, but that verse right there, that verse, the, the don't be unequally yoked in context, that's that's about people with bad behavior are pulling you in a certain direction. If that ever happens and AP is uh, is pulling me around and making me behave horribly and, and violate you know what I believe in and stuff like that, then it would make sense to quote that verse to me. As it is saying, don't be unequally yoked. Unequally yoked. You're yoked to something that's stronger and is pulling no, you I get, around. I, I get your point. Yeah. I, I get your point. But I'm just, I'm just curious to know, wouldn't you extend the same courtesy to that Quranic verse as well? Because I think that's what, that's, that's that, the, that's, that's the that's, meaning they extract out of that too, don't they? They can do, they can do whatever they want. But there, it's a command. No, but do you? But do you also think that? No, but do, 
No, but do you also think that that could be? Uh, I'm not command. I'm, I'm not commanded. Not I'm not commanded not to be friends with people. I'm commanded to not be chained to them so Influence that they pull me around. If a Muslim wants to say, "Oh, that's not saying friends. That's just saying don't let them guide you away from Islam or something like that." It doesn't sound like what the verse is saying there. But uh, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. Fair. Uh, no, no. I, okay, I, no, I, no, I don't control what they think about it. No, oh yeah. That, so fair. anyway, the, yeah. yeah. So anyway, the point. The point was, I've had. I've had Christians apply that. The vast majority of Christians don't seem to have any problem with me uh, doing regular shows with uh, with an atheist. They tend to like they tend to like AP. So, I, in fact, what I've seen it seems like they're they're it seems like they're more atheists who have a problem with us just being buddies and and doing shows That's together true. than Christians. Right. But with Christians, I've caught it over the years in a, in a way similar to other things that apostate Aladdin was saying. That I'm being way too mean and harsh with Muslims and so on. So I've been I've been bombarded with that way more than uh, any criticisms over me uh, being friends with a, an atheist. But they've been I mean I got bombarded over the years with oh you're you're just going to drive more Muslims away and no one's going to listen to you and nothing is it's, it's you're 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 only damaging any bridges we could build with Muslims by criticizing Muhammad and the Quran and making fun of these things, and so. It's not a situation of, oh, look, here's this one guy who sees things differently from us and wants to tell us, hey, we should be doing it this way. That, that, we get that all. We get that all the time. We get that. So, yeah. So anyway, the point was apostate Aladdin, you know, right now we're addressing him and we 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 believe he's wrong for telling us, hey, no, here's how you have to be. Here's how you have to be doing things and so on. But everyone keep it in mind if you disagree with him. There are all kinds of people now, right now telling us, telling yeah. uh, everyone else in the world, this is how you should be doing things. And this kind of comes just from uh, the social media thing where people spend 15 years. Here's what I had for lunch. And they think that's something relevant to be shared with the world, that they think yeah. every position in their head has to be shared with everyone. And you know, no, no, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Here's my advice to young up and comers, that even if you think your heart is in the right place, always weighing the consequences of whatever your actions are going to be because um i've made some blunders in the past which i regret not necessarily because i had any malice intent behind that but because it didn't yield me the result that i was looking for so technically it ended up being a strategic blunder so you should you should just always watch out um uh, or, or, or gauge the possible consequences of your actions okay thank you very much uh dart funk for becoming a member um stop scamming man is thank you for your super chat again it says while it makes sense for people is for people islamists want executed in the states they hope for to join in criticizing islam there shouldn't be timidity in criticizing each other on things they strongly stand for yeah look again I, I think i just answered that i think that there is a way to do things um if you e look even if you are Probably, let's just say you're right in your criticism of me. But if you don't extend me the courtesy of speaking to me privately first, and then you go out and embarrass me publicly, I'm never gonna see you. I'm, I'm, I'm never, I'm never gonna see you in positive light ever again. I'm just not gonna do it. And and it's gonna take years for me to even take you seriously for anything about anything. So, um, so no, I. I understand that. Like I understand this this question that people we we're not a cult. We don't want to behave like groupies. Therefore, I'm going to register my 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 differences. He, when someone writes a hit piece, it it is considered it is within the norms of journalistic ethics that you at least send them the article first at the, the day before it it gets published and said, "Do you have any comment on that?" He didn't do any of that. And I hate those people who just go out of the way, and they, and it seems like he was he, he was holding on this uh, uh, hatred for AP for so long that he just saw an opportune moment. He was like, "This is it. I'm going all guns blazing." Um, and and I think we all know that he didn't like him. I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't like me. Look, and that's fine. When I realized he doesn't like me, I never said anything. I know there's so many other ex-Muslims who actually don't like me, especially after October seventh. I don't I don't make any comments. I don't make any snidey comments about them. I don't I don't go like, okay, let me find something on so and so ex-Muslim that is so abhorrent that is such an easy thing for me to to attack him or her on. And let me make a hit piece on let me make a video on that. I, I can do that, but I wouldn't do that because I'm a decent person. Or maybe I've been in the game long enough to understand 
that how stupid these things are, especially to ex-Muslims. You know, when when people go like, "Oh, Harris was like like this. He shouldn't have, he shouldn't have done that." Nobody cares about that person who's saying that. But then you know what Muslims are doing? What these people do? They take screenshots of that and then they throw it in my face over and over again. And you and I, you, you know who? What that reminds me of? That reminds me of that person who actually did that because. In the moment, he thought that, oh, I'm going to be so fair. I'm, I'm just going to go out. I'm going to write it down. You're an idiot. In my book, you're an idiot who doesn't know that what could be the consequences of your stupid um, action or reaction, whatever that is. No. Yeah, and on this, uh, on this comment here, so it makes sense for people that uh, jihadis want to kill to... Yeah, we could we we could have that common ground in criticizing Islam, but he's saying there shouldn't be timidity in criticizing each other on uh, on on what on on other things. That that's true. You can have you can have levels here, right? Um, <clears throat> so I've I've pointed out, you know, suppose there's a burning building, and I'm in a bu burning building with a uh, Muslim, a Jew, and an atheist, and a and a Hindu, and we need to get out of the burning building and climb down the elevator shaft or something like that. Well, that's that's not a time for any. Uh, disagreements about anything. If you have a ton of jihadis saying, hey, we're going to get our Islamic state. We're multiplying so rapidly. We're going to get our Islamic state. We're going to execute you all. Well, let's, guess what? We're, uh, I mean, me and all my friends are under a death sentence from that. That kind of makes sense, even if we have some different perspectives on other things to be united, at least on that. But yes, with that said, you can always have disagreement. And AP and I have done that repeatedly over the years. We've had, we'll, we'll sit there and watch a video, like an apologetics video or something like that and share our thoughts on it. Um, and he'll criticize the argument. I might agree with the argument. I might even criticize the argument if I don't if I don't agree with the argument stuff. And so we're free to disagree. But this ties into what you're saying. AP and I, we have our disagreements. We're not we're not trying to kill each other. We're friends. We're friends and we have these. We're friends, we have those disagreements. And that's how I got started in Islam. My my best friend was a Muslim. That's why we're having those discussions. But it is good to be in that mindset rather than here's this other person with whom I cannot have anything but hostility. I can have no relationship with that person except one of aggression and hostility. That's something that uh, when I was talking about, you know, back in the 80s or 90s, most of your day is sp spent in, in friend zone. You're, you know, you, you have a calm, you don't feel like you're being attacked most of the day, whereas now people uh, do feel like they're being attacked most of the day. But I mean, so recently, you know, in recent years when like sporting events would become politicized, like you go in there and whatever side you're on, you're, you're at odds with part of the, uh, part of the, uh, the, uh, the, the spectators watching, um, because now it's a, now it's a political issue and it, it's similar. It's similar to like apostate Aladdin's thinking in that, it can make sense to a person. A per if a person's walking into a ball game and saying, how can we be sitting here enjoying ourselves, enjoying the ball game when there's this injustice that's going on over the year? This makes no sense for if there's this injustice going on in the world, how we can all just be enjoying ourselves laughing. No, we need to take this opportunity to draw attention to it and make this about that issue. And so I can see a parallel with that with, hey, you guys can't be getting along when you have these big disagreements on these other issues. You got you to bring those up. And it's absolutely disastrous because I think this ties into what you were saying. It was actually, it's actually really, really, really important for people to go to some event and we're all on the same page. We're all rooting for the same team. We're all rooting for the same team. We're wearing the same team's jerseys in spite of every other disagreement we have. It's good if we all have times when we just get along so that when we do have our disagreement over something, we do have our argument, hey, this is not some alien from outer space coming to attack me here. This is another guy. I remember I get along with this guy in other situations. So let's keep that in mind as we have our uh, our disagreement. So uh, it's, it's extremely important. For, in, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, if you have two kids, if you have, two, let's say you have a, a, a four-year-old black kid and a four-year-old white kid, and they're playing in the sandbox. There are people right now who'd want to look at that. No, I have to run in there and start telling you about the history of oppression and so on. How can these guys just play together when they don't know about all the oppression and things that have taken place? And wh why wouldn't you think that your, your, your main goal right now should be those kids getting along for a long time, becoming friends, playing on the same teams, 
uh, going, doing everything and being best buddies. And then you bring it in. Then if you have to bring it in, then you bring it in about the dispute. But by that time, they already know, wait a minute, whatever things have happened in the past that we may need to address, I know I get along with this guy and I know he wants nothing but the best for me. So I'm not going to let, I'm not going to let any arguments destroy that, what I, what I actually know about this guy, but they, they want to destroy it all before you ever get that. You, you, you can't, you can't, you can't have any times when, Hey, we just get along and we're friends. No, everything has to be constant hostility between you and every other group. And uh, so pretty, pretty dangerous to uh, civilization as far as I can tell. Yeah, that's one of the consequences of uh, wokeism running amok. I've heard that they're teaching critical race theory in schools. And you're right. Like, I mean, if, if you're telling little six, seven, eight year old black kids uh, that, you know, there's this history of this or whatever, and then how much unjust there is on the basis of your skin color. Of course, that eight year old kid is just going to develop some sort of resentment towards this other group of people. That's just a bad idea. But um, yeah, anyway. And with, with, with last comment on Pasad Aladdin, I think, as I said, it didn't look like as he made it out to be an ideological difference. I think he had a strong position in Israel, Palestine. Fair enough. Again, like a, a, a lot of my ex-Muslim friends as well, who, who uh, they've had a different opinion to that of mine when it comes to Israel, Palestine. But I think we've handled it really well. Um, but I've seen those who don't handle well, they always say, well, you're doing it for Zionist money. Like, it's just, it, it's such a, I mean, you even went to, Israel, Palestine. You had to do crowdfunding. You, the, the Israeli government didn't say, "Hey, we can use you." Hey, I, I put on this voice. <laughs> you you told yeah. me that. Hey, yeah. we can yeah. give you this money. We'll use you as a propaganda tool for us. Why don't you come? Here's fifty thousand US dollars, which would be nothing mm -hmm. for the Israeli government, mm -hmm. I believe. They don't do it. But these people are so shallow. The moment they find a disagreement, they always find something sinister behind that. It's just, it just, it just yeah, tells that, me that's in the. That goes back to the Quran. No, I mean everything in the Quran. If you're if you're doing anything, if you're disagreeing with anything, it's all because you're you're being bought and paid for somehow, or you're you're you've got no, some. But Allah is not a, a material motive. Oh he, yeah, pointing him out. But yeah. he's not a Muslim. But but he said that. Oh look, he used that Aaron Bushnell's tweet, and he said, Oh look, he's pandering to his white supremacist crowd. Like yeah. But, so it's just I don't know. Like, I I I have this uh, crazy. Aversion to these conspiracy theories, basically. But anyway, let's go. Let's get on with it. And I, I do way. as well. I do as well. In, in fact, when someone brings that up, it makes me trust them significantly less. Mm. In other words, if anyone says, ah, anyone who disagrees with me, ah, it must be because yeah, so, I, I'm not money or something else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it just tells me about your state of mind that you are um, uh, you're so susceptible to believing in conspiracy theories. Or maybe you want to join the dots because you don't like an incomplete equation. Or maybe you're so mentally incapable of understanding the fact that people can just look at the same amount of evidence and come to a different conclusion. Yeah, that's you, that's very important. What you just said right there. Like we could, you, you and I could, you and I could look at a living cell and the structure of it and come to very different conclusions. So it's not always a matter of, oh, if he just had access to this information, people can have the exact same information and come to uh, and come to very, uh, very different conclusions. But I, I did want to point out when you're talking about conspiracy theories, what I'm talking about when society is becoming fractured with no common ground and groups that are all set against each other, it, that is uh, that is some fertile soil for conspiracy theories because once once that other group that you've set yourself against is so atrociously evil that they'll do absolutely anything mm -hmm. well it becomes very easy to say you know what they're doing is uh, you know what israel did is actually wasn't hamas it was the idf they went in and massacred all those people at the concert and uh, if, if you believe that they're that evil that becomes a a believable uh story to you so anyway uh, i think we're gonna see more no, but before that no more, more conspiracy point. theories yeah, no, we'll, we'll go to that. But but one more point on that. I think I saw you yesterday on uh, Tommy Robinson's space. I mean, I, I like Tommy Robinson, everything he says about Islam and how he's trying to protect England from Islamism. But then he's also a massive anti-vaccine conspiracy theorist. Um, you're right. Like, I mean, every every group, every type of people, um, uh, pe people from all walks of life are actually suffering from this. You know, where they create conspiracy theories because when they can't work out something, they just come up with it 
they just come up with a conspiracy theory. It's just it's just fascinating that everyone is suffering from it. Um, yeah, here we go. Pikachu called you to Zionist scumbags. You, uh, uh, did he call me a Zionist scumbag too? Did he call you? I have no. I have no recollection of this. I'm sure it happened, and I'm sure I was right. Sure, there, yeah, I might I have done it's that. Not, yeah. I mean, given given the insults that get heaped on me on a daily basis, it's it's not going to stand nothing, out. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, I I am a Zionist. I'm not sure about the scumbag part. Um, but it's fu it's funny because it's Daniel Hakikachu, the world's leading defender of uh, pedophilia and child marriage, calling us Zionist. Zionist it's become a meme so, now. Yeah. You know, he picked a fight with uh, Hindus as well, and Hindus have been roasting him, and he's oh, going back funny. and forth with them. It's, it, it's hilarious. And and you know what I've found? That, so so I'm not saying that we should behave in a similar manner. What I've seen that with these Dalagandists, when you go on a debate with them, their um, minions, Muslim minions, whether their guy has made good arguments or not, it's irrelevant. What they do, they flood the comment section. and They say, we won, we won, we won, we won. Let's just say, you know, the, the, the ploy of trying to subdue you uh, or demoralize you. But um, but then and, and then and then you see, like, we have some voices within uh, our own community who who are like, oh, no, hang on. I'm not going to behave like that. I'm going to just go and say, yeah, Harris was stupid, or blah, blah, blah. But just on a side note, I, I, I saw um, modern day debate taking out some excer excerpts from my from, from my debate with Hakikachu. And I, if you go have a look and look at the comments underneath, which are from neutral audience, there are no Muslims mm. there because obviously all the hype is gone. And they're absolutely roasting him. Now they're seeing the absurdity mm. of the arguments that he had made. Now that might also mm. be because these people are drawn to Daniel Hakikachu because of the Israel-Palestine conflict or something. But it just tells you when you look at the this in isolation without the background noise of, of, of Muslim mm. minions saying that our guy won, uh, people can look into these arguments a lot more clearly yeah um, ap's pointed that I, I forget what it was in reference to but he was pointing out that uh when something was posted and the the minions had been sent to uh to flood the comment section uh then people would have one perspective but then when something would get posted later on and they didn't flood it then people have the exact opposite yeah. reaction yeah. so it is exactly so I mean, keep in mind that means it is uh it is somewhat. It is a somewhat effective methodology, which is why I'm guessing why they do it. Yeah. Well, no, not really. Like, I mean, it, it didn't do anything to me. It just, the, the no, 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 no. I, no, I, I mean for I mean for them. Oh, because, oh I mean, yeah, if, yeah. If, if if most people aren't, if most people, I mean, so in other words, if your crowd goes in and they see the comment section filled with "oh, oh he destroyed him, he destroyed him," they, <laughs> oh wow, they destroyed him. I don't even really need to watch or pay much attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, yeah, good point. Um, but, but, but it's funny, as I say, like, because modern day debate posted some excerpts, and I was like, I was reading all the comments, and they were all favorable to me. I was like, oh, okay, all right, <laughs> all right. Um, nineteen oh one, Ellen, I saying hi as a recent convert from lifelong atheism myself. Well, so from you were an atheist, and now you're a Christian, I believe. I highly encourage you to keep exploring the idea that maybe we need some religion, and also that one of them may be true. It shocked me too. Oh, that kind of does a bit of a rhyming going on there. Um, yeah, look, I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to go down the route of Ayan Hersi Ali, who says she's now she's become a cultural Christian. Is, is, is that the term that she uses? Something I could definitely look. As I said, I'm def, I, I'm definitely more charitable to the idea that uh, some traditionalism, some cultural traditional values are important in order to keep the society in check. But, but for supernatural claims. I'm sorry, I, I, I would need more evidence than that. Um, no matter how good and beautiful a story is, with no disrespect, um, to me, for me to believe that it's true, I would need a little more than that. Um, so, yeah, look, I mean, if something happens, like I've always said, it, like if, you know, if, if something supernatural happens, who knows? I'd be like, guys, my, my, my fellow atheist, something happened in my life. I'm, I don't want to convince you, but look, don't attack me because I've had that experience and I know. And they'll tell me, they'll, they'll be telling me, no, you were under the influence of psychedelics or something, whatever, you were hallucinating. I'll be like, and I know this urge would be very strong. Like I actually had the psychedelic experience a couple of years ago and maybe that changed me, not immediately. And I didn't know that. And the kind, of, I, I always, I, I never understood the meaning of spiritual. I always like this is just mumbo jumbo. Like people who can't, people when they can't make sense out of things, they just call it spiritual or whatever. But uh, but but anyway, I had the psychedelic uh, um, uh, psilocybin mushrooms, and the way it kind of opened me up to the reality of 
maybe what we perceive with our vision and our obvious senses is not all there is. And but then when you come to your senses, you're like, okay, well, it was definitely that because you took that substance. So I don't know. Look, I mean, it, it, it has definitely made me a bit more compassionate towards people of different faiths. But I can't extend that to to Islam per se. But I'm, I look, as I said, like I've got a great relationship with a lot of Muslim apologists, especially in the Pakistani Udu sphere. Um, and they, they mention my name with respect. And I think we've gained a lot of ground. Um, and, and I'm okay with that. I am not hostile towards, even towards Islam. As long as you believe in whatever you believe in privately, whatever, I, I genuinely, it's not even my intent to deconvert people anymore. I, I am more interested in the real world impact of these people's teachings and you know, what kind of influence it's going to have. Uh, I love the West collectively. It breaks my heart when I see England. I go there every year. It breaks my heart when I see there are no-go zones. I, it breaks my heart when I see these people jumping up and down and saying that Sharia for UK, there's going to be Sharia. And it breaks my heart even more when I see that there are so many idiot, useful Pakistanis, useful idiot Pakistanis with the tree-hugging, pathological, altruistic idiots who think that not everything's fine, just business as usual. It breaks my heart when I see that because they don't understand what Islam is. So that's why I'm, I, I may appear more hostile towards Islam, but uh, but I, I, I have no problem with Christianity anymore. It's just because like it just hasn't done anything to me. It doesn't harm me. Roe Ro v. Wade was probably one thing, but again, like it's not, I, 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 I genuinely see that as just a transitional phase. But by the way, D David, I mean, um, AP says that, you know, you and I, he, him and you share a lot of values. And I have a feeling that that might be true with us as well. But what is your opinion on um, Roe v. Wade or, or things like where people, um, where religion can actively play some role in, in legislation? What, what, what is your opinion on that? Well, I, I mean, like the saying, the saying is you can't legislate morality and that i mean that's that's just nonsense i mean don't murder that's legislating that's legislating morality and so on so there's always some there are always some things involved in here um and if a if a person believes that he's not supposed to kill people because people are created in the image of god then even a, even a, even a rules about not murdering people they're going to be interpreting from a uh, from a religious um, from a religious framework uh, I'll say to tie this in with everything else we've been talking about here, <clears throat> Chappelle talked about this. Dave Chappelle talked about this. He said, hey, with, uh, with uh, you know, you women with the Me Too movement and flipping out and putting guys back on their heels, you, you watch watch what happens. He told him. He said, watch what happens. Here's, here's what's actually going on. Actually, tolerating abortion is a is a pretty difficult thing for a christian who believes that uh that human beings are created in the image of god it's like it, this, this person is there to to be the image of god and you're saying ah this it's not it's not convenient for me right now or something like that so to actually like put up it, it, you were at people were asking a lot for from christians to not just be not just be going off a, a, about this constantly but societies reach a kind of equal societies reach a kind of equilibrium where okay as much as as much as this enrages me uh i'll put out with okay. it okay yeah um now what happens what happens is once people become more polarized and now it now i have no common ground with that other group things change too now i have to crush mm. the other side not hey i have to I have to get along with the other side and we have some common ground. We have this thing that we really, really disagree on. And it is really, really hard for me to put up with that. But I understand because keep in mind, you could like killing a, a life, even if it's not a fully developed life, I would regard as bad. It's also, it's also bad to be telling people what to tell. Hey, I have control over your body, woman. Okay, that's also that's also a problem. So that you, you got to, so in other words, you can look at both sides as right about something. Right? You can look so you can have that. And say, hey, this person isn't trying to be evil here. This person who disagrees with me isn't trying to be evil. Doesn't want me destroyed. This person has a different view. And guess what? This person is right about something. And so you could you could avoid viewing the other person as this hopelessly evil thing. 
and you could you could say okay how do how do we actually function in a society once but it then becomes they get hey, yep. but no i'm but, saying but once get, once, yeah. once it becomes you're actually evil and i'm good then i yeah. then i just I, i'm seeking to destroy you and that's where yeah. that's what you got to now these people over here who are doing these things it's not because they're it's, I don't care about the women. I, this group has to be destroyed. Oh, these guys are trying to impress, uh, trying to oppress me and control my body. Now I have to destroy them. And you just, so you lost it. So you, and in so an you, effort, lost, this, you lost the harmony that you had. And in an effort to destroy each other, they become more and more unreasonable. For example, one side is saying that even if you're raped, you know, you got to keep the baby. Even if your health could be endangered, you got to keep the baby. And the other one is becoming more outrageous by saying, no, I should be allowed to even kill the baby as soon as it comes out of me, even after a day. So so I, I get your point. And the, because there is no effort to find the common ground and then give some, take some, that's why we are in this. Yeah, I, did. I, yeah, there, I guess the a, only there was a daily yeah. there was a daily show tweet uh, several years ago that said, uh, uh, you know, annoy a conservative, go, ha go, ha go get pregnant and have an abortion or something like that. And then there was they did a show where there was a no, this wasn't on the daily show they gave a woman uh, uh, her own show and she had this big celebration of abortion and as far as as far as uh, how these things tie together if you go back to the 1990s democrats the democrat position was abortion should be safe legal and rare safe legal and rare that was the goal they were going to be they're going to be safe so you didn't want any you didn't want to have to have them in in back alley so you wanted them legal and you you didn't you didn't want to have you didn't want to have a, it wasn't a good i it, you didn't want to have abortions uh so you mm -hmm. wanted them rare you wanted to encourage people to use uh condoms careful. and things like that yeah to try to avoid them then, so when it when that becomes as people become more polarized and they're doing everything they can to enrage the opposite side to own them ha 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 we got you yeah, now it changed to hey, I'm I'm actually uh, loving it. I'm gonna run around bragging about having abortions, and uh, I'm gonna go go say I'm gonna have as many abortions as possible. And so why? Because it's just it, it enrages the other side that you now that you now hate. And so yeah, this is these are some of the ongoing it's issues. The same, it, it's the same with Muslims as well, and I think we're guilty of that too. It's like Muslims say, no, we'll behead you if you do anything to the Quran or say anything to the Prophet, and then we go like, okay, oh really? You're gonna come and behead me? Here we go. And look, this Salwan Momi got what, what he's doing every week. So, so yeah, you're right. I mean, I, and I think we're, we are all collectively, consciously or subconsciously, a part of all of this. We're, we're all trying to crash mm -hmm. the other side and being, yep. uh, we're trying to, and then in the process, we're trying to enrage the other person. Ha ha, look what I can do. So, um, wow. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's in every area right now. And you could see the impact. If you go back, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you could have people when your candidate didn't win, you you could still respect the other person. So when JFK wins, I see he's a Democrat, Republican, there's there are still Republicans who like uh JFK and don't think that hey, these guys are gonna destroy this the society. Same thing with Ronald Reagan, he's a Republican. You had you had uh, they're called Reagan Democrats. There were Democrats who liked Reagan. Same thing with uh with Bill Clinton. There were there were there were plenty of people on both sides of the aisle who liked Bill Clinton. Then everything changed. Now it's almost like for some people, it's almost like we have to get our our candidate has to win because that's the that's going to be like a big smack in the face to the other side. And uh, yeah, so, so now uh, you can now you I don't think you can have I, at this point in society, unless things change. I don't think you can have right now a candidate that both sides would uh, would like or or respect. Yeah, but this I, is I not sustainable. Can. Yeah, but collectively, that's true. Um, that's true. That's happening. No. So, so what, what what's going to end up happening? Are we all going to be ruled by Putin's of the world, or like some some strong man is going to come and is going to get us in line? Because it that's, seems like we just can't handle freedom. If you if we have it, so we're not using our freedom. That's the problem. That's the problem. You have to handle freedom responsibly. So mm. you, you have to be you have to be control. You have to have control from within, or you'll be controlled from without. That's just if once you go buck wild and anything goes, and I can use my freedom for whatever I want, and it's no concept of uh, being responsible with it. You cannot function like that because everyone is going in. Everyone is going in completely different directions, and. That, no that, leads no to, that leads that leads to chaos. And when people have to choose between chaos and a dictator, they'll go with the dictator as long as he's going to maintain order. Wow. That's a very good point. That's a very profound point. Uh, Jizia from your handler, Mosh Cohen. Thank you. Harris, would, would you say your personal Shackled. view on Israel? The, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Harris, would you say your personal view on Israel, the conflict from the first ever video you did on us to nowadays has changed? If so, how? Thanks. Good to see you too, David Wood. Um, no, I think I started 
developing my um, my view on this whole conflict pretty early on. And when I saw the hypocrisy from the other side, I think I was probably one of the first people to highlight how Muslims were awfully quiet when half a million people died in uh, Syria, 300,000 people died in Yemen. I think my tweet went got something like 8 million views or something. And then I think after that, uh, Douglas Murray started following me. Piers Morgan started following me after that. And I've seen, I'm not saying that I'm the only person who came up with that. I'm pretty sure other people would have noticed that too. But um, th that was one of the hypocrisies. I, I remember having that conversation with my dad and I asked him, I told him, Dad, you know, four, four, 300,000 people died in Yemen. Do you know anything? Look, oh, if that happened, I, oh, if that happened, I, I condemn that too. I'm like, so basically you're just a pawn. Mm -hmm. You're just being told yeah. to be outraged. And at that point, mind you, there were only 5,000. Again, like every, every casualty is too much. I, I, I really feel bad for them. And, and uh, David would say, I suggested that too in the past. That if I, if I grew up in Gaza, I think I, I would have joined Hamas as well. Uh, I hope not. What, what, I, I don't know. I don't want to judge Palestinian people. I don't, I don't want to judge Gaza. I don't like those people who are so hostile towards Gazans. Um, this is why I in, in interviewed uh, this guy from Gaza as well, and I think he's, he's the best guy to follow if you want to hear a sane Palestinian voice. So I, I, I noticed that hypocrisy, and I saw how how dogmatic Muslims were, especially with the Muslim diaspora. And then no wonder they find uh, so much in common with these blue-haired Wokies, because these guys form an opinion. And, and they have a very narrow worldview. Wokey see that as an oppression and colonialist angle. And one, one group is oppressed and the other one is an oppressor. That's it. All the other nuances, nuances go out the window. Muslims see it the other way. Muslims say, oh, Jerusalem is supposed to be under our control. We've had it for nearly 1,200 years. Who are these people? Jews who have their own country? No, we can't allow that to happen. And so they hold these views and then they fit everything after that to satisfy their uh, primary position. So I, I, I saw that and that's when I, I, I learned so much and I saw so much. I used to think that when people said that, oh, anything, anything you'd say about Israel uh, and an Israeli would say, oh, you're just an anti-Semite. You're just an anti-Semite. And I thought, you know, maybe they, they do overplay it. But then I actually realized how much truth to that accusation yep. really is. Because when you understand that the Muslim opposition to Israel does not just come from, oh, you colonized us, because obviously you, you, you can make tons of arguments against that position alone. But then when you realize the, the main factor behind their opposition to the existence of the state of Israel is Jerusalem and that whole region should be under our control. How dare these Jews have their own state? That's that's the crux of it. Anyone who denies it is an, either an idiot or a liar. That's the crux of it. And why would you not extend? Everyone is allowed to have their own country. Everyone. But Jews are not. And then they go, oh, why, why, why are these uh, white European Jews in, in Israel? And then, that, for example, when I found out about Mizrahi Jews, I was like, oh, I never heard about this. So for the first time, when this conflict happened, I think I did justice. I had read this book um, on, is, is, on the history of Israel-Palestine conflict. It's like a tiny book, but it was very fact-based. Um, so I, I thought that it, it's, it, it's futile to go into um, oh, how Israel was created, where should we start from? Should we start from 1948? Or should we start from the Ottomans or go all the way back to, to the Romans? I, I, I thought that was futile. I'm, I, I'm a big believer of what's done is done. I'm a big believer of historical conservatism. I believe now Israel is here, so how how can we find how how can we find the common ground a common ground? How, how can we do that? It's the same with Pakistan as well. My country of birth was divided. We divided India in the name of religion, in the name of Islam, but I don't want Pakistan to be wiped off uh, off the map just because it was founded on shaky grounds. That's not the reason to do it. Now you, Pakistan exists. Let's just get on with it. So so I think this. This conflict made me look into this. Um, uh, it changed my whole perspective towards Israel, and it 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 and it and it showed me how. And I think I had to be an ex-Muslim in order for me to be able to see this hypocrisy from the Muslim side. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of ex-Muslims can't. They still can't go past this anti-Semitism that was uh, that they were indoctrinated with. That's what it is. It's just pure 
anti-Semitism. Israel, I think, has done a lot. And it's the most maligned country in the world. I genuinely believe that. He, w w people make fun of this. Oh, Israel, is the, uh, the IDF is the most moral army in the world. People make fun of it. But I was looking at Israel's um, uh, com uh, enemy, uh, combatant to civilian ratio is better than Iraq's, uh, US's um, combatant to civilian ratio at its peak. Um, I think it works out to be two to one, and, and the, I think Israel's one is like one point eight to one or something like that. Which is, and considering Israel's job is a lot tougher than America's job in Iraq, this is a lot more um, uh, densely populated region. There's one argument that I just thought of. They, sh they tell us nearly seventy percent of Gaza's buildings are, are, are totally demolished, totally destroyed. So you 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 wonder if Israel is so careless and reckless, and it's out for Palestinian blood. Why haven't seventy percent of Gazan population been eliminated? You know why? Why it's only one percent? And again, it's, it, even one is too many. The reason why it's not seventy percent is because Israel does its utmost best in dropping pamphlets, text messages, phone calls. Hey, we're we're losing the element of surprise. We know that we're telling you, and now even Hamas is going to run away, but we're still taking the risk because we don't want to kill Palestinian civilians. We just want to destroy this infrastructure, despite knowing that some Hamas uh, fighters are going to escape as well. That, but nobody gives any credit to Israel. And I'm not saying that you sh Israel should be getting any box boxes of chocolate from Muslims either, but I'm saying there should be a little bit more consideration. But when I see these anti-Israel, this Muslim diaspora, the, these Islamist propagandists, when I see them, I see through their hypocrisy. And I, I think it's even malicious at times, it, it, they deli they know that it's the truth. For example, the, Muhammad Hijab in his debate with Rabbi Shmuley, he he did not call it a genocide when Rabbi Shmuley Rabbi Shmuley mistakenly thought that Muhammad Hijab called it a genocide, and Rabbi Shmuley said, "Oh, do you know the definition of uh, genocide?" And Hijab said, "No, no, no, I didn't call it a genocide. It would be a genocide if they keep going at this uh, combatant to civilian ratio." But the moment he goes away, he starts calling it genocide. Now that is clearly malicious and dishonest so i can mm -hmm. see through it but um so yeah so sorry i think i went on a bit of a rant there yeah do you want to yeah, add something just, to it yeah i have i have pretty much the the same view and that i'm looking at this and if you if someone wanted to criticize something that israel did and they should have done something else zero problem with it if you want to say hey this this idiot who just fired on these people and stuff like that when these people are surrendering uh stop that guess what Israel is filled with people who would who would who could agree with uh, with something like that, and I'm also I've never absorbed the idea that if you have to if you can if you condemn one thing you have to simultaneously condemn everything else around the world. Uh, I hear that all the time. So ah, I condemn this, but what about this thing on the other side of the world? Okay, yeah, people can condemn that too, and so on. Uh, but at the same time. It's one. It's one thing to say, "Hey, this is what I focus on, and and I'm addressing this issue, and this is what I study, and I'm criticizing this." It's something else where the entire world fixates on one spot and ignores everything else, to where they they ignore everything that's going on uh, in, in Yemen, Nigeria and, and yeah, Nigeria uh, in uh, in Syria uh, in Syri Syria and so on. Just completely irrelevant, no matter what's going on in anywhere else in the world, even if it's an actual genocide. All that matters is the Jews in, in Israel. And it, it's it's along the lines of what you just said. Any other any other nation, if they were engaging in the kind of warfare, urban warfare, hunting terrorists down who may be in civilian clothes and hiding among civilians and so on, that is a nightmare situation for engaging uh, a war. Any other nation on the planet would, would think that two to, a two to one ratio is really, really good. And military historians have commented on this: two to one is is really, really good for the situation that they're in. And uh, it's just completely the, the rule completely changes once Israel is involved. Like what, whatever mm -hmm. the rules that everyone else in the world would operate by, as soon as Israel is being discussed, the rules change. And this happened. This happened right after the war started. When when all the uh, every all the journalists, Pierce Morgan and everything, they all started talking about what's the proportionate response, the proportionate response, meaning you killed 1,200 of ours, so we're going to go kill 1,200 of yours, and then we're even. That, That's not how it works. Plan, on, on what planet is that the goal of a war? Your goal yeah. in a war is to stop the other side from ever being able to do that to you again, mm. and how would you achieve that 
by fighting them until they surrender and you can impose rules to make sure that that never happens again and they return all your people. Yeah. That 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 would be that would be a common sense goal for anything like this. You've attacked us, we're going to retaliate until you surrender and we make sure you don't do that again and oh by the way if you've got some of our people you're handing them over. It's exactly what Israel's doing. Hamas isn't surrendering. They're not they're not returning the hostages. And so Israel, okay, we're going to keep fighting you until you do. Which that would be like common sense what you're supposed to do. Yet the, if you're a government, your your responsibility is to do that for your people. And if on top of that you're taking every precaution you can to make sure to minimize civilian casualties in an environment where the people you're fighting are trying to maximize civilian casualties because mm. it, it's you know they can use those as on on social media and so on. Uh, and the entire world is blasting away at them and ignoring the rest of the world. It becomes clear that, yeah, you can't you can't use anti-Semitism to respond to every criticism. You just can't. Some criticisms, even against Israel, even against the idea, it's some legit. criticisms are justified, are justified criticisms. So don't respond to those by just saying anti uh, anti-Semitism. And yet, the way the entire world fixates on this and applies completely different rules to to Israel is clear that anti-Semitism is uh, is alive and well in the world. I, I never got the chance to respond to this Piers Morgan's point of proportionality. I mean, I, I imagine if Israel could kill Hamas in its entirety with only 600 civilians, would you still have gone back to them and say, hey, you killed 1,200 of our Israeli civilians. We've only managed to kill 600 of your civilians, so let us kill another 600 of your Palestinian civilians. You'd be, you'd be like, what the hell are you? What's wrong with you? So it's got it's got nothing to do with civilian to civilian vengeance, or um, so it's so it's got to do with your military objectives. I.e., you have to kill Hamas um, with uh, uh, and try to keep the civilian casualty rate as low as possible and try to achieve your military objectives. So um, so yeah, and and one more thing that I I've always thought I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, or you might not know. Well, I, I, actually, I should ask ChatGPT. Um, I think Hamas is the only militia in, in the history of mankind whose winning strategy depends on maximizing its own civilian casualties. Everyone else, like Ukraine, tries to minimize its own civilian casualties to try to get them in 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 in, in uh, subways or in tunnels or whatever. But Hamas is like, no, we want more of our people to die because the more people die, the more pressure can be put on Israel. It's such a and 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 we have so many useful idiots in the West who are just they're just ready to fall for it. Yeah, and me and AP, we we saw this over and over again. So you have uh, you have these. Uh these bomb shelters everywhere you go in Israel, like everywhere you go that is an actual target zone for Hamas rockets. They're just these underground shelters that you go in uh, it just, just all over the place because they want people to, to go in there. Um, if, as soon as they, as soon as a, a warning is announced, um, but also in houses in houses and apartments, they all have, they all have, uh, they all have safe rooms. And the safe rooms are not just like in the U.S. where you're trying to stop an intruder getting into you. It's, it's like if if your house is hit with a rocket or something like that, you actually have a room in there that you can go where you'll be safe. Uh, everywhere, everywhere we went when we were because we went to the we, we went to a kibbutz and so on. We're we're walking through. Everyone always had their kids' room is the safe room. In other words, your kid's just normal room is a safe room that if something attacks, your kid is, is safe in there. And uh, when we're, when we're listening to the people who went through the, uh, the Hamas attack, it was everyone got sent into their safe rooms. Everyone who's, who's in the, all non-combatants are sent to their safe rooms while soldiers go out and fight. And it's the complete reverse with Hamas where I mean, they announced they said when when people were asking, "Hey, why don't you let let the civilians down into these tunnels?" Because the tunnels aren't for civilians; the tunnels are for Hamas. So think There's about this: UN's they launch responsibility. An, they, yeah, they launch UN an attack. And responsibility. Yeah, they launch an attack. They all run and hide underground and leave everyone else and leave the women and children up, upstairs because they want the the women and children to be hit in the attack because that's part of their long term. Strategy. goal this is this is how we win it may take 50 years it may take 100 years but this is how we eventually win and the useful idiots in the west have actually ensured that um it, it, the, i think there was an article published in 
uh, in the Washington Post uh, just recently, where Sinwa reportedly said that uh, he would welcome Israel's attack on Rafah because uh, a lot more civilians will die. And as a result, the world will put pressure on Israel. And that's how we're going to win. That's how we're going to achieve uh, ceasefire. So it's so wicked. It's so freaking wicked. They, mm. And 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 this and this Muslim diaspora that 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 claims to be crying for these Palestinian people, they just don't see that because that yeah. that shows me that's so wicked. It's not about Palestinian lives. It's just it's just it's just not about Palestinian lives. It's about no, it's not. It's a, it's about wiping Israel off the map, making Jews their dimmies, and capturing Jerusalem. That's it. You should live beneath our heel. That's the goal. Yeah, if it if the goal were at all, if the goal were at all protecting civilians, protecting women and children, and so on, then the message would be Hamas, turn yourselves in and hand over the hostages, and let's try and uh, try right. and work through this. That's never the, that's never the message. Uh, but two, the, the sort of long term, the long term message would be very different. If you're concerned about civilians, the message would be, guys, stop fighting, get it out of your minds that you're going to go and take over Israel. You're not. Focus on building up your own communities, on getting an education, on building for the future. Do that. And it's not. They say, hey, you guys who can't, who don't, can't hope to win in an attack against Israel, just keep attacking them. Don't worry. We'll keep defending you on social media. Okay. You're the guys who are getting these civilians killed. Those of you who keep mm. Uh, convincing them that if they just keep attacking, they'll eventually win. You guys are the ones who are responsible for these civilian deaths. I can understand even Hamas doing that. Okay, so that's like okay, we got to. The, they can create any justification for their actions. Like, oh, we got to survive because uh, as long as we survive, there's resistance. We got to recap. Well, how wicked are these Muslim propagandists online? These these Salman yeah. Ahmed or whatever his name is, how wicked are they? Not once have they ever said, they're not in favor of Hamas surrendering. None of them are. So that, sh that tells me Palestinian lives are of no value to them. They, they would sacrifice every Palestinian child yep. and the last one to, uh, to achieve their military objectives. Yes. Apostle Aladdin, David Wood, how dare you fake atheists? It's against queer arm. Okay. Apostate Aladdin is here. Aladdin posted a video of apostate AP saying that it is good that Jews should take over Hebron because Muslims kick them out. That's not an atheist argument. That's a religious supremacist one similar to Muslim makes. I'm okay. So there's one criticism of uh, AP as well. I I don't know. I watched his stream. I don't know his. I I don't fully understand his point of view. But as I said, one when, when when I found out how apostate Aladdin was misrepresenting. AP, so I didn't really, I don't really give much attention to it. But I am, I have always been against the Israeli settlements, and I'm not the only one. There are a lot of left-leaning liberal Israelis as well who protest, as David Woods said, told, told the story of that um, Israeli waitress who go against people, and they are not in favor of settlements. I think again, it's one of those things. Like if you want to find a common ground, then you have to give something, take something, even though the West Bank is religiously and culturally very important to 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 jewish people i understand that um but but i'm i'm not in favor of going in keep, keep putting this uh, you know settlements in i think it's as far as i know i think it's against the international law as well so i heard ap say but ap is not here un unless david wood can comment on that I, I I don't fully understand AP's view. I think he said that he was joking or something. I, I, I don't understand. Uh, but, but at least that's my position. Yeah, uh, I don't know about this particular issue. And yeah, I would have to, yeah, I'd have to ask him to say exactly what he means in context. He does believe, he does believe that uh, Israel isn't actually being aggressive enough. And so... Yeah, I have mixed views on uh, on all these things. I'm I'm not a fan of the settlements. I do, I do understand the people who are are basically saying we're we're giving up on some future goal of two state. We don't. It's not going to work. They're always going to be obsessed with attacking us, and therefore we just need to keep expanding little bits to give ourselves more buffer regions and stuff like this between us and and some of these guys. So I understand it. Uh, I, I'm I'm seriously I'm seriously hoping that Hamas fails in such ec, uh, such spectacular fashion right now. That I I hope that there can be some future uh, some future state where people say, okay, we give up on the idea. We acknowledge that Israel has a right to exist, 
and we are we are no longer going to support terrorist attacks or something like that. And I, I would hope that you could actually have a functioning society uh, in Gaza or something like that. So I, 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 I hope for that. But a AP, AP is on the it's never going to work situation. So just tell wow. shove them out shove the shove the people out send them send them to it sounds like that's what his position is like yeah. uh so i don't know if that's his position i don't agree with that and um so yeah so su super pl platinum platinum i mean, man, I mean it, it, it 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 ties in it tie i mean it ties in a bit to pessimism that there's no solution to this yeah yeah i mean it's like it's like pulling off the band i mean it's 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 like when when I was talking earlier about um, you could demand a ceasefire right now, and that would save some lives right now. In the long term, that is a horrible message to send because the mm. message you would be sending to terrorists is, "Hey, go kill a bunch of our people, and then run and hide, and we'll eventually give up." What's and make noise mean? on social media? Yeah, and we'll eventually give up because college students are protesting and so on. That's a terrible message. Whereas mm. if you if you relentlessly pursue them and crush them. Then the message you're sending is, "Hey guys, just so you know, if you attack us, we re you you'd better be sure you love you love death more than we love life because we're gonna we're gonna grant your wish, and we are not going to stop under any circumstances. It doesn't matter where you hide. If you go hide on Mars, we are going to send a ship there and hunt you down and get you there. So that it becomes ingrained in their minds. We we cannot get away with this. We cannot get away with it. That's a better message to send. So so but but I mean, keep in mind wh what I'm saying is." Being relentless and even brutal right now in pursuing terrorists, even though there are going to be civilian casualties, it's actually in the long term you're saving lives by ending the cycle of violence. I think that's AP's reasoning. If we just if we if we just end this in 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 really 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 brutal fashion and say don't care, you guys get out get out of here. I'm I'm not defending this, but if I think this is the reasoning, yes, it's going to be a huge mess right now. But you you got to get it over with. I think that's the reason. I think that's and in but, the long term. In the long term, I'm not I'm not convinced that that would fix things in the long term. But uh, I think that's I think that's his idea. And yeah, it is sort of just I'm giving up trying to trying to get along with these guys. I'm giving up hoping that these guys are going to change their minds ten years from now or something like that. And just uh, yeah, so it's a rough. But, but that, that's the point. It's yeah. it's a it's a rough it's a rough situation. It's a really really bad situation. You've got Israel and they're surrounded by people who want to crush and destroy them but on the opposite side so in gaza and the west bank you've got christians you've got muslims who who don't want who just want to live their normal lives and so islam specializes in putting people in these situations where there is no good there is no good alternative nothing nothing is good it's just taking all these different bad scenarios and picking the one that you regard as least bad in the long run and going with that and yet islam just specializes at putting the world in these uh situation because it's similar it's similar to what western nations are going to be going going through right now when you have all these guys in the streets oh sharia and we want sharia and we're going to do this we're going to do that like what do you do do you respond in brutal fashion uh and do something about it but in the process you become the kinds of people that yeah i you i i, do, I don't want to be around if you're just you know or do you just let it go for there's no there's no good situation that's what it's i what understand your view you now and I understand your view, and you were actually misrepresented by Apostle Aladdin as well, because apparently he used this argument from you, and he interpreted it as, though you were saying that, while Muslims are taking over Western countries, therefore it's okay for Jews to go and have illegal settlements. That's the kind of no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. no, no I, I, I get what you mean. Yeah, I get what it's you like mean, yeah. it's like when I say it's like when I say uh, it's like when I say. Uh, uh, end the occupation of Hagia Sophia right now. I'm not serious. It's like you guys are saying this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make fun of you about it because you're mm. complete. You're complete. Uh, you're completely uh, hypocrites and so on. So yeah, when I say when when they say ah, it makes no sense for Jews to move into an area until they until they take it over. Uh, okay, well, isn't that what you guys brag consistently about doing? So why why the hypocrisy? But yeah, I'm not saying wow. I'm not saying that as a defense. Yeah, yeah, but I think we you, you guys already established in your last stream. That uh, this guy has comprehension issues. <laughs> By the way, that's one of the that, that was one of the funniest streams I've ever had. I think it went on for like four hours, and I, I and I listened to it in one point five. Your imitation of a uh, a, a uh, some of the jokes of your discussion. <laughs> that's absolutely hilarious. Can you can can you can you give my audience some of your discretion, please? Um, I don't remember what he sounded like at all. 
<laughs> it's funny that, that you was... actually said that. It's actually funny that you said that. And then when AP played that, and then you went back to, the, to your original voice that you had assumed he would have, which was actually nothing like his voice. Oh, did <laughs> but it was funny yeah, regardless. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I want to talk to you about your psychopathy as well, but I'm sorry. I've, I've just got some super chats. I'm just going to quickly go through them. Elena is saying, I agree. I also needed evidence. I would investigate the evidence for past supernatural events, not just wait for an experience to happen. Sorry, Elena. I don't know. I don't know how one can do that. Like, I just, I'm, I'm, at some point, I'm just going to have to take someone's word for it. Um, so, um, I, I have to see to believe it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. And the, the, the issue, the issue here would be as far as if you're, if you're thinking like in, if you're thinking in, uh, like Bayesian, Bayesian terms where you've got the prior probability and then you bring in the evidence. And so what's the new probability your, how you assess a past miracle. So the resurrection of Jesus or Jesus walking on water is going to have a lot to do with the the prior probability you assign to miracles. And so if you've been examining the world your entire life and you've seen no evidence of miracles, then you that's that's playing a role in how you're uh, looking at past miracles. Mm. Um, in other words, okay, well, I, all my experience, so this is like a, Hume had some problems in his argument, but you know the the gist is you have a lot of experience against miracles and therefore when you examine one you should that should you, you should be taking that into consideration and conclude that it was all uh that it was all made up but uh so so as you're pointing out suppose you saw a miracle or suppose you knew someone and you talked to this person this person that you really trust this person says you know me and me and my three friends we all witnessed it and here we all are that might change what you assign to the prior probability of a miracle happening in the past you might actually think oh okay well if there are people like around right now who are saying they've witnessed this or if i witness one myself if i witness something i can't explain then maybe then when you so anyway the point is what you observe now does play a role in examining uh past but i think it's supernatural but i think it's a little bit more but i think it's a little bit more deeper than that too because i am also willing to humble myself enough to think that Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was maybe I was mistaken in interpreting an event happening around me and mistaking it for a miracle. Whereas um, the stronger evidence would be the knowledge, this body of science that we have that doesn't recognize any miracles, although it recognizes some quandaries, some unknowns. Um, but we cannot just call them miracles. So, so it's a little bit simpler than that. I think you have to open your heart to it. Uh, so to speak, um, especially as I said, like after my psychedelic experience. Oh, actually, I don't know why I did that. It, it was a psychedelic experience. Um, um, it, it, it was, um, although it made me a bit more compassionate and empathetic towards religious people, but it also kind of told me that how people can be fooled into into interpreting things around them. Because at the end of the day, we just got five senses that we just have at our disposal and they can be very easily manipulated um so yeah I'm I'll, 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 i don't know if jesus will ever visit me or not but anyway hamas supporters are worse than daesh supporters hmm uh, let me think um daesh supporters no actually mm, well, daesh was pretty bad they were so bad that even the majority of muslims didn't even support them Hamas supporters, I would say, I, I don't know uh, if they're worse, but I, I could actually say they're just as bad. I don't know, David, what, what's your opinion on that? Uh, yeah, tough call. I mean, if I had to, I would think that Daesh was, were worse, but. Yeah, I would say Daesh was worse. That, that they were really worse. They were so bad that even Muslims didn't know them. <laughs> okay, this guy has been with me for the longest time. David made me leave Islam in 2009 and 10. Um, AP and Harris made me an atheist, and now a Zionist. Just wanted to thank all. Well, we're doing something. Wow, right. you are cre <laughs> you're creating Zionists here. I know. <laughs> no, yeah, no. So you know, I actually said that in my in the Urdu sphere, and that 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 upset a lot of people. I said I don't see anything wrong with this term Zionist because in the in, in the modern day and age, Zionist only means someone who who believes that Israel has a right to exist. Mm -hmm. That's it. Israel yeah. has a right to exist. I have said that if I was in the 30s or in the 40s, I may not have supported a religion, uh, sorry, a, a state being created out like that. I may not have supported that. But right now, I'm 100% Amazonist. Israel exists and it has a right to exist and it even has a right to defend itself. 
There's no two ways about it. So I guess that makes me a Zionist, and that's perfectly fine. And the people are like, oh, you're a Zionist. Look at him. He must be getting dollars. How can, how can an atheist be a Zionist? Like, what the hell are these guys talking about? So as I said, like, so, anti-Semitism is so ingrained in the psyche of these people, not individually, but on a societal scale as well, that they just can't see past their original point of view. Yeah, and this, uh, yeah, that that is another example of the uh, anti-Semitism because, I mean, think anyone else in the world, if Saudi Arabia said, we have a right to exist and defend ourselves, the entire world <laughs> would go, yes, yeah, so what? If, if Pakistan said, we we have a right to exist and defend ourselves, but wait a minute, you were, you were created by the British uh, evacuating then dividing up the country and so on. Okay, here we are in the world and we have a right to exist and defend ourselves. You would agree with that with every country in the world except one. And then suddenly... The, the most evil thing you can be is someone that says that country has a right to exist and defend itself. And it's like the, the worst thing you can possibly be in the world. And so, yeah, the people got some issues, man. There's so many there's so many similarities between Pakistan and uh, and Israel. I just thought of another argument that you just mentioned that oh, it, uh, the, the Brits um, carved up India. You know what? One of the common arguments that Pakistanis use against that argument, they say, well, there never was a united India. <laughs> you know how Zionists uh, say nice. that? Yeah. <laughs> there never yeah. was yeah. a Palestine, think... which is true. So yeah, so yeah. if you say that there were, never was a united India, so therefore we could chunk the Western uh, uh, part of it, well, you can apply the same logic on Israel Palestine, but they're so stupid. They just mm -hmm. never see any of that. Yeah. Um, and by the way, I mean, the reasoning the reasoning was similar as well. So you've got the, yeah. the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire loses uh, World War I. So they lose their caliphate. And then the land of the Ottoman Empire is controlled by the British and the French. The, the, French. the, the British the control the area. Yeah, the British have the British mandate of Palestine. They have to decide what to do with it. Uh, after World War II, it's, hey, wait a minute, uh, the, some of the leaders down here, the uh, the uh, Grand Mufti of Jerusalem included, is actually was conspiring with Hitler to wipe us out. Do you think we could have one little spot of land down here where we're not under the control of these guys who want to exterminate us? Because uh, it, it, it seems to preserve lives that we should have a, a piece of land where we're not under that control. That was that was the same reasoning with Pakistan and, and India. It's, hey, wait a minute, you've got a bunch of Muslims and a bunch of Hindus. What are we going to do about this? We can't just leave. We can't leave all the Hindus under Muslim control. And we can't leave all the Muslims under Hindu control. So let's try and let's try and divide this up uh, a bit here so that there's an area. And guess what? P tons of people were displaced. There were there were Muslims who were on the Indian side. And so they went over to Pakistan. And so, I mean, some people did stay, but you also had Hindus in Pakistan who said, we're getting the heck out of here and we're, we're going down to India. So you had people displaced and so on. And what do you not want to do? You don't want to stay. Yeah, you don't want to say, therefore, you guys must continue uh, uh, violently attacking people for forever until you until you get back that place that you had to leave. Once, once a, Guys, these are rough situations. Sometimes land needs to be divided up after wars and people do the best and you just got to live with it. You don't live it. You don't live in the past and just say w eternal violence until uh, until we get our way. It doesn't it world doesn't work like that. What makes Pakistan more atrocious and created in bad faith is the fact that they knew that half the Muslims will remain in India. You know, here they said, no, all the Jews can come to us. You know, like we'll, we'll leave you alone. You leave us alone. Um, but but in the case of Pakistan, they knew that half the Muslims will, will, will live there. Um, Kamaya Singh, have you read Among the Mosques by Ed Hussein? No, I haven't. Um, Pastor Aladdin is back. Have you read Dragon Ball by Akira Toriyama? I think you're you're a comic guy, aren't you? no? No, um, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not a big comic guy either. I'm half Tunisian and half Kurd. I mean, I mean comics like X Men and stuff when I when I was yeah, younger. not the uh, not the uh, whatever Ball? that stuff is. Dragon Ball? No. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm half Tunisian and half Kurd. Both sides go back over a thousand years. I love it when they say go back to Europe as if we are all white Europeans. Yeah, that's what they say. That that's that's the common narrative. Like Mizrahi Jews, even I did not know about it. I never paid any attention to any pro-Israel arguments, despite being an atheist for 10 plus years or whatever. And 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 despite being hateful towards Muslims, which was a common accusation. So it's like, hang on, now Israel, no, no, no. Israel's definitely wrong. Not gonna pay any attention to them, whatever they say. But the, but this event really opened my eyes. Uh, I think I literally any other country in the world would do what Israel is doing, yet it somehow Israel is wrong. This is uh, the greatest hypocrisy of the modern world. Yeah, that's correct. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, seriously, can, can you can you imagine if a bunch of terrorists came and took, you know, your your, your daughters and stuff like that hostage or your, your, your baby hostage and so on? And they run and they run and hide and everyone starts going ceasefire. It's like what? Immediately. Israel hadn't yeah. even Instantly. Israel hadn't even retaliated and they started calling for ceasefire. Like what the hell these idiots were thinking? I think later on, I think um, I was reading somewhere they said that they knew that Israel would retaliate, but they didn't. They didn't think they would retaliate like this. And now all of a sudden, the open air prison that they, they're showing before and after images. Look how beautiful it was. There were swimming pools, etc. I'm not saying that the, the the life was actually no. It wasn't as bad as they made it out to be. G Gaza's GDP per capita was better than that of Pakistan. <laughs> so, so that says a lot. Um, and 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 all of these rich Arab countries and also evil Western countries had been giving this aid to. Gazans, so they could maintain some sort of life. But people call that occupation. Oh, this is evil. Blah blah blah. Yes, it's not ideal for Israel to have this blockade over Palestinian territories. But you have to understand, it is just in the matters of security. Israel does not get involved in like what laws are you creating, what are you teaching to your kids. So you have practically you have full independence. The only ind independence you don't have is to is to import weapons from from uh, hostile nations like Iran. That's it. That's the only and because. Hamas keeps on doing what they've been doing. That's why that blockade becomes harsher and harsher. Because yeah, if we, if we let in a truck of that, that that is supposed to contain food items, but um, beneath the crates there are some rocket la launchers, then of course Israel is going to become more and more. Israel is going to get tough and tougher and tougher. So yeah, what these people don't understand, they're not willing to listen, and it just yeah, it doesn't matter to them. Okay, Jasper, Paolo, Balo. Paolo, Paolo is saying, as a Jew, the beautiful thing about Western values, I can be friends with anyone. I can talk in a civil, subjective manner where, about, about beliefs with my atheists, Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, and Muslims, Muslim friends, but can't criticize the latter one. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I think West is losing uh, one of those golden values as well, as we discussed in the first part, um, that um, the, the intolerance is growing like never before. In, a, in our attempts to crush the other side, we're becoming more and more outrageous because we want to rub it in your face and we want to just completely bury each other. Um, that's just making a very uh, brutal society. Um, okay. Uh, so, sorry, David. I know you got to go, but I'll just quickly wrap this up. And I don't, I, I, I don't have to go. Oh, beautiful then. Okay. Yeah, we have okay. David Wood, ladies and gentlemen. Keep sending the super chats and I'm going to have um, really some, I've got some really interesting questions for David as well. God has already shown you a natural sign in 1948. He fulfilled his promise to Jews. Kibbutz, Galud, Deuteronomy 31. Of, I don't know. I, I, um, you, you know, like if you read any religious scripture, you're going to find these similar prophecies. Um, uh, but yeah, to me, uh, they're not really that smart. But I don't know, David, David you're, you're the Bible guy. You would know what he's referring to. Well, and I mean, some of these you could always... Uh you could always say they were like deliberately fulfilled. In other words, if you say, if you have a prophecy about returning prophecy. to the, yeah, if you, yeah. yeah, if you have a, uh, if you have a prophecy about returning to the land and that's always in like the minds of Christians and so on, and then they support the return of, uh, of Jews to the land or something like that. So point, the point was you wouldn't, I mean, I, I, I have to say, because I've never been, I've never been interested in like end time stuff and so on that that has changed a bit recently it's like if you go back if you go back there are all these prophecies about jerusalem and all the nations being gathered for war and stuff I was like gosh it really looks like that's i mean this is talking like thousands of years ago and it, it's kind of looking like that with that said though with that said um yeah that doesn't mean you would have to look at a prophecy about returning to the land and say therefore you know that's that's a that's a mm -hmm. miracle there can be other there can be other explanations but this again this would come down to if you're looking at it in the context where you're thinking of God's uh, providence and so on over these issues, that would that would make sense. If you're if you're an atheist and looking at it as you know, from a skeptical perspective, that probably wouldn't be terribly persuasive to you. Yeah, not, none of them are. Um, uh, uh, I can see Muslims quote these predictions or prophecies uh, so vehemently try to convince atheists who are skeptical in nature and they show us for example the muhammad's uh, prophecy of like oh there will come a time when uh, bare feet uh, bare feet arabs would build tall buildings and look they just built mm. burj khalifa but yeah, they forget tall buildings they, mm. yeah but they exclude the next part that um uh, that, that sex slaves would be giving birth to their masters 
children. It's like, well, hang on, we don't have any sex slavery anymore. We, we, thanks to the Western world order, we've completely abolished it. So, but yeah, some of the some of the part. some of the prophecies can't even be fulfilled anymore because places where like uh, uh, dual Colossa is going to have the women uh, marching around with their buttocks exposed and so on, and that place was destroyed. Quickly. It was yeah, it was destroyed. We got Nicki Minaj. Um, we got so, Nicki Minaj. So you. Have to You'd have to say no. Paganism is going to return. They're going to rebuild it, and yeah. then they're going to you know, restart these pagan practices and so on. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But how do you respond to those prophecies when when they just turn simply turn around and say because they're so vague in nature, they just turn around and say, well, maybe it hasn't happened yet. It's going to happen. I'll give you, I'll give you a couple of examples. Like for example, there's Ghazwai Hind that Indians are very concerned about. There, there, there is there's only one hadith about that. The people who stand with Jesus. Um, near the end times, and people who will conquer India will go straight to heaven. And some uh, non-hawkish Muslims, some softy Muslim scholars, they, they say, well, that's already happened because India was invaded in the 7th century, um, sorry, 8th century, yeah, 8th century, I think. Um, and then that's it, it's done. That, that prophecy has already been fulfilled. But some people say, no, it wasn't fully conquered look at this modern state of india is still here so it's going to happen and that's how hawkish ones they, they try to galvanize pakistani muslims and say and and this is one of the reasons a lot of pakistanis believe that one day we're going to conquer india it's going to be underneath um, uh, our feet because our dearly beloved prophet has already said it so so that's you, you can twist it twist these prophecies any which way you want how, how do you respond to them when they say well it hasn't happened <laughs> Well, that I mean, they're correct, and that's why I pointed out there are examples where it doesn't look like it could possibly happen. If a place was completely destroyed by Muslims towards the end of Muhammad's life, and his prophecy is about the end coming when something's going to happen at this place with all the pagans there, and there aren't any pagans there, and the place is wiped out, it's like, how does that, apart from rebuilding it, apart from rebuilding it and restarting the paganism, how can that prophecy actually be fulfilled? So there, there are, yeah, there are, uh, there are examples like that. But along the lines of some of these uh, being able to interpret them in different ways, I saw uh, there, there's a clip from Yasser Qadi, which was from, from a few years ago. But he points out that, uh, so in the Quran, over and over again, talks about the children of Israel and uh, Allah ordering the children you, yeah. of Israel to go take the land and so on. But uh, then it says that, you know, the Jews broke their covenant, they're disobedient. And so Allah gave them these two punishments. Mm. And there's there's disputes among the, the Muslim scholars uh, about as to as to yeah. what these uh, punishments were, because if you're talking about being taken off the land that happened, that was with the the Babylonians, Assyrians, the Assyrians, the Babylonians and the Romans that that happened yeah. three times. So what are the two? And they'll have disagreements. But uh, Yasser Qadi was saying he he's lumping all three all three with the assyrians the babylonians and romans together as one and the other one is a future yeah. punishment and he said this this uh he believes this refers yeah. to uh to muslims ex wiping israel off the map it's just interesting there's like this guy's a uh, popular muslim speaker and yeah. it's uh we're gonna go and wipe we're gonna go wipe these jews out yeah there's those two verses i was actually gonna bring that up um uh, because obviously i i looked into it as well uh, post October 7th because a lot of Muslims were using that as like when you actually read those verses they're so freaking vague mm -hmm. yeah you're right like are they, are they talking about the Babylonians are you talking about um, uh, Nimrod or, or or the Romans what, what time are they talking about so it, yeah it doesn't make doesn't make any sense you can just retroactively fit them anywhere you want um, uh, oh yeah I've already done that okay Blue Moon is saying what, what does IU mean? Right under? Right wing? Uh, war, no protesters in front of Russian embass R Russian businesses. Uganda. Oh, it might be a, um emoji. Uganda, no protesters against all black people in the USA. Okay, war, no. No war protests in front of uh, Russian businesses. No protesters against all black people in the USA. Mm. Hamas abuse and unalive... Uh, the, I'm struggling, really struggling to read them. Did you get them? Are you, are you getting the point? Uh, Hamas abuse. Yeah. So yeah. So the point, the point here is you've got oh Russia Ukraine arguments, oh, yeah. a Russia Ukraine war. So the Russia Ukraine war, you don't have people uh, going and protesting in front of Russian businesses around the world. Uh, oh. So yeah, it's it's more calling out the uh, hypocrisy. hypocrisy of double there are things there are things going around. There are things going on in various parts of the world. And you don't see ah oh, we need to go after every. Russian business and so on, but they will go after any uh, business owned by Jews. 
Yeah, no Jews, no news kind of thing. I think that's what it is. Yeah, you're right. I, I, absolutely. 100% blue moon. I'll tell you. And I think this is so obvious. Anyone who has an iota of integrity, intellectual integrity, can actually see that. But all I see is that from these people, they make, they, all they make are is just emotional arguments. These are, these are emotional arguments. Yes, this, the, these events are not easy. I've said it numerous times. That's not easy. Uh, if, if someone looks at those terrible videos uh, of people being blown up, including children, it's not easy for anyone. But I think there's another downside to that. These guys have done it so much purposefully. And I know a lot of these videos turned out to be fake as well, but I don't comment on them because I can't verify that. And in, if it turns out to be real, then I think it's a uh, it's great disservice to those people who have actually suffered. Um, so I, I don't talk about that. But my point is that how they are weaponizing human tra tragedy is more wicked on these on these so-called pro-Palestine side because they're weaponizing it, they're using it uh, to achieve their military objectives. And the useful uh, uh, wokies are falling for it in their naivety, and some big Muslim apologist propagandist accounts like that Ahmad Salman and uh, the, the Dawa guys, etc. They they're just using that purposefully to. I, th I think this is just wicked. I think it's so wicked. No, so it is. Cool. This goes. I mean, yeah. This is uh, again people with the uh, with the dark tetrad of uh, personality types uh, with the personality disorders. They insert themselves into the situation. So, for a narcissist, a narcissist or a psychopath or something like that, he sees a big situation and ooh, here's here's a way for me to become more popular and get everything I want, and they'll insert themselves into that situation. Mm. <clears throat> John Choi saying, what's up, Harris? What's up, David Wood? Can you guys convince AP to get rid of that caterpillar crawling on his face? I hate it. Caterpillar crawling on his face? What is he talking about? That horrible, ridiculous mustache AP's been growing. Oh, all right. Yeah, okay. he oh, yeah, yeah, I saw he that. yeah, he apparently woke up one day and decided, uh, I'm Italian, or my name is Giuseppe, or something like that. And <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, I get it. Uh, right. Um, Sam Kai, reunification of India, yay or nay? Well, well, now we see a lot of Indians say, we don't want it. <laughs> as I, as a Pakistani who's seen my country go from bad to worse over the years, and it being it's, it being an absolute failure of an experiment that the founder of Pakistan did, um, Pakistan, I think a lot of people are now beginning to believe that Pakistan would have been much better under United India. But then there is a right-wing Hindu element in, as well, and I can't blame them. They say, well, you know what? It's actually good because if you include the populations of Pakistan and Bangladesh in United India, then uh, then Hindu and Muslim um, demographics would be almost 50-50 or you know, very close to each other, and Muslims would have eventually outbirthed out um, uh, Hindus, and then India would have been... Now, there you go. That, that would have been a real conquest of India. <laughs> you know? yeah. Imagine India. Then India would not have been a secular country. It gives rise to another point that I wanted to make and your, your opinion on that too. How... I mean, I'm, I am for, to, for, a two states, uh, for the two-state solution. Um, I do believe eventually, I do hope so that when there is no more violence, when, uh, when people in Gaza and the West Bank, they show that, okay, look, we can, uh, we, we, we can be the UAE of... Um, or the Singapore of the Middle East, etc. Once they can do that, there's no violence, there's no hatred towards uh, Jewish people or Israel. Then let's hope down the track, 15, 20 years down the track, Israel says, "Look, we are convinced. You have we have very good friendly relations. You can have. There's no blockade now. You're fully independent." I I I, I believe in that, but eventually, uh, so that's one workable. So, solution that you could subscribe to i know some hawkish people probably don't believe in that and, but how pathetic is this one state solution i mean who, who are these people these people who believe like i'm, I'm talking about the davagandis yeah they have a huge voice now like and we have seen the their real world impact like the amir suleiman the Mohammed jobs their popularity just tripled quadrupled post uh, this conflict and they have basically led this onslaught against israel um, or, or against the Western world order. Um, but these people who 
believe in total subjugation of the world, um, total conquest under Sharia, under Islam, blah, blah, blah. They believe in that. Then on the other hand, they also say there should be one state solution where, where we'll be one secular nation and everyone will live happily ever after. Excuse mm. me? Are there any, do you have any Muslim countries that have a good track record of showing that they can sustain secularism? Turkey was the only one, and we can all, we can all see what's happening to Turkey. So, so who, who, wh- that's what I'm saying. They're so dishonest. They strategically use dishonesty as long as the ends justify the means. But the other way around, I always get it wrong. But yeah, what, what, what is your opinion on that? Like, I mean, it's so dishonest for these very people. To tell us that hey, one state solution is fine. We can we can just be secular people. <laughs> what do you uh, think? Yeah, I mean, it, you're right, and you, you've 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 talked about this earlier. Their their real problem is just with Jews having a place. They, they can't they can't handle the idea of losing to Jews. They just can't handle it. It, it enrages them. It enrages them around the world. And yeah, anything's on the table. Any and any sort of propaganda. If you have to use every. If you have to use every civilian in Gaza and get that person killed in retaliatory strikes, then you just have to do that. In your, if your end goal is uh, is not giving, not letting the Jews have a spot. Um, wow. So yeah, there's no question. I mean, you're dealing with terrible, terrible, terrible people here. Yeah. And as far it's as the Dawa, as far as the Dawa guys and using this to their uh, inserting themselves into these situations and using them to their advantage. Yeah, terrible uh, people. I mean, I'm, I'm like you in that I would hope for a two-state solution. It's, uh, and I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of hoping that Hamas is crushed so horribly that they realize for a long time we cannot win. Now there, there's a there's a trade-off here because the more brutal you are in eradicating Hamas, the more people are the more people and around the world, but even the, the local population, the more negative view they're going to have of you in the future. So the easier it is for, uh, for future generations of, of terrorists to arise. So you, you basically want to implant the idea, guys, don't try this again as much as you, it, it doesn't matter how much you hate us, whatever, do not try this attack again, because it's not going to work. And we, you know, we, if we have to keep bombing you down to rubble, then we will, we don't want to. So there's that, but I'm thinking of it in terms of like a combination of factors. It's on the one hand, Israel needs to crush Hamas and make sure future generations of terrorists understand this is, you are not going to get away with this. It, it, it doesn't matter how much college students scream or how many businesses are protest. It does not matter. We're, we're, we're coming to get you and we're not going to stop until we actually get you. So there's that, but I hope, I hope that we can over time continue shaking people's confidence in the prophecies of Muhammad and uh, we, we, it would be good if we ended the Islamic religious obsession with with taking out the Jews. If that was if that was diluted enough to where they just gave it gave up the idea, and we don't have to go, we don't have to go and conquer Israel. We don't have to. We could just live our lives. I, I'd love to see that. I, I don't know that we're going to see that, but anyway, that's the hope. Crush, crush yeah. Hamas now. We continue doing our work, getting people to stop thinking that this is. You know, they have to do this because if it's part of Islam, they have to go after the Jews. Uh, that will just have to wear down over time. I'm just going to give you an opportunity hopefully. to I'm going to give you an opportunity to uh, to save yourself from some unfair, dishonest criticism because you just said that brutally crushed them. And people like Apostle Hamas. Aladdin would say, Hamas. yeah, yeah. But what they would say is that what do you mean by that? Because Israel is trying to brutally crush them and in the result in in the process 30,000 people have died you want 40,000 you want 50,000 so just just elaborate on that just just to crush that dishonest criticism that's going to come your way yeah so Hamas again the message you send to Hamas right now cannot be if if you send this message it is disastrous for all future generations on all sides disastrous for Israel it's disastrous for the Palestinians it's disastrous for everybody if the message you send is hey you kill a bunch of our people run and hide and then we'll eventually give up because of international pressure and we'll just give up and we'll stop coming after you. That is a horrible, horrible, horrible message. And that's what I hear so many people calling for. Just call for a ceasefire. Okay, that would be disastrous. That you, if you, if if there was a ceasefire right now and Israel stopped and said, We've done enough damage, the message is go kill a bunch of people, then run and hide in tunnels, and we'll give up. And then you could come out and do some more terrorism. Uh, that's a disastrous message. So as far as Hamas, this is not uh, this is not me. 
uh, I've pointed out before, people say, ah, look at these horrible Hamas people and these guys killing people and they're so violent. And well, guess what? I was, I was, I was violent too. So I hope that these guys change over time. Mm. So what I would actually like to see, I would actually like to see people around the world calling on Hamas to quit being freaking cowards, turn yourselves in and hand over the hostages and then throw yourself at the mercy of the people you attacked and, and, and hope they have some level of mercy, uh, towards you, but you're going to be, you're going to be punished. Uh, that's what I would like to see. And that's what would actually, uh, do that. That's what would be best for everyone. Hamas turns themselves in hands over the hostages. hostages. I don't yeah. think that, I don't think that's going to happen. So the next best thing is making it clear to Hamas that you, if you're a terrorist organization that goes around and kills a bunch of people, then we're going, we're, we're not giving up and we're going to crush you. So some people what? use that argument and people say that, oh, you know, you, we, for every Hamas soldier that you kill, you're leaving enough destruction behind that these people will become future terrorists. I spoke to, I spoke with this um, uh, Palestinian activist, um, Ahmed Al Khatib, brilliant guy. And he actually said, no, that's not actually true. He lost 31 of his family members in Israeli raids and he did not have hate. And it's like, how, how is that possible? I'm like, if I was you, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I would be so calm about it. And he, look, and he and told me about his struggles with anger and anxiety and hatred, uh, hatred that comes. And, but he understands it's not a solution. And, I, and then he said he, he, he doesn't want it. He wants peace. He wants peace because what's done is done. I have to move forward. It's very difficult mm. to even come to terms with that. You, you can't even put, put it to words. But then I look at it. People who did 9-11. Yeah, people said that, oh, America lost in you know, Afghanistan, etc. Look, the Taliban are back. They're not the same Taliban. Every dog that was involved in killing 3,000 innocent civilians on, in, on September 11 is dead. Al-Qaeda is gone. Yes, some other unforeseeable consequences came out of that, but that's fine. But it's not America that lost in Afghanistan. It's uh, Af Afghans lost in Afghanistan. Uh, America tried its best. Whatever. Like, I mean, after they had to, they had to do what America did. But after that, America tried to install democracy. It didn't work out. It's not America's fault. America installed a government. They equipped them as much as they could. But, well, they showed those people are not ready for democracy. And, again, I'm not blaming Afghan, Afghan people collectively because I know when the Taliban took over, um, uh, there were so many people who were fleeing Afghanistan and uh, they still are. But the point is, this is I think this is fear-mongering that, oh, uh, all of these, uh, Israel is just sowing the seeds of future generation mm -hmm. of terrorists. I, I don't I don't buy that anymore. We heard the same argument when the U.S. was bombing, uh, was drop, were dropping, um, having having these drone attacks in the tribal regions of Pakistan, and a lot of people were dying. And Imran Khan used to say that, "Oh, look at this! Uh, if, if someone kills my family members, I'm going to become a terrorist too." That's what he, he used to say. Um, and I used to buy that. But where are those people? Not shaming them or anything, but I think there is this, there is this innate desire in all of us that once we find, once we come to terms with something, once there is a political solution, charismatic political leaders can convince their people to move on. We have to look to towards a better future, etc. So I think it can be achieved, but the condition is, as you said, you're right, hundred percent. Hamas has to be destroyed, and then Palestinian people need to be convinced by Palestinian people themselves. That there's no future. We've done it for 75, 78 years or so. We have to find a way to coexist. And we can and, and we, we we need to prove to Israelis that look, we can be um, you know, the, the Singapore of the Singapore of the Middle East. Uh thank you, San K. You're saying we uh, we've already done that. Uh David Wood, huge X-Men nerd, Magneto cosplayer confirmed. I will report this embarrassing fact to AP. Um I don't know if you you, you do go to Comic Con, so yeah. No. Oh, okay. Well, no, there, there was a Comic Con. <laughs> no, what was it? Was it a, there was some sort of a Comic Con? No, like I, I, I've, I've heard you post something about it. Not Comic Con. That was a Apologetic Con. That was an Apologetic oh, conference. Oh yeah, Apologetic. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. No, I don't know. I used to, that. I used to steal comic books when I was a kid and break into stores and steal them, and I would read some of them. So yeah, I read uh, X Men, Wolverine, some Spider Man. Um, stuff like that when I was a kid. Right, right, right. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's just quickly go through this. Harris Palmer saying, David, do this kind of stuff with Harris. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, uh, David is obviously 
there is there is a big man here you know like i can't i can't grab him anytime i want so um harris any chance you can host me one day for a chat i'd love to answer every question you have just came back from four months stationed in ramallah studied islam and middle east in affairs for eight plus years yeah certainly look i'll um I, I, these days i'm a bit lazy with live streams um that was one of the reasons why actually i hadn't invited david wood but it was a combination of many factors but yeah look, i'll send me an email i'll i'll, I'll see what i can do uh, I, I want to do a. Yeah. I want it. We didn't. We didn't get a chance, but uh, I wanted to go to uh, Ramallah when we were over there, and because uh, they have like four star hotels, and I wanted to uh, make a video. I spent a day in the world's largest open air prison, and uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I heard you mention that in your uh, post trip Israel trip video that you were talking about, like how you wanted to go there. There were some some really nice buildings there. And it's not as bad as it's. Would you would you agree with this statement? Like, I mean, I haven't been to Israel. I was gonna go to Israel. It's funny when October seven happened. I was in Europe at that time, and I was planning to just stop by in Jerusalem. You know, like I didn't plan it, but so if I was gonna go there, I was just gonna be there for like three or four days. But then October seven happened, so I was like, okay, well, I can't go now. Um, but would you agree with the statement that Israel is by far the most maliciously maligned state on earth? Oh yeah, I, I, I don't even think I don't even think there's a close second. Yeah, yeah, I don't think there's a close second. The, the, nothing, nothing comes close. Um, it, uh, I, I just found inside the fact that in 1971, in 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 Pakistan's civil war, which uh, gave birth to Bangladesh, Pakistan was responsible to in the killings of three million Bengalis. Three million. That's not uh, since uh, the, and, and throughout the history of this Israel-Palestine conflict since 1948. I, I was shocked to hear this fact. Hundred thousand people have died, a hundred thousand, and, and thirty thousand of them have came out in in in, in, the, in this latest conflict. So prior to this conflict, seventy thousand people. Again, I'm not I'm not being heartless and saying just seven seventy thousand. But when we look at it holistically in terms of global conflicts, the figure is minuscule. But nobody nobody puts. Pakistan in the list of genocides, uh, genocidal countries. Nobody says anything about Turkey's Armenian genocide. Nobody mentions anything about Syria's own um, genocide on its own people. Saddam Hussein chem using chemical weapons on Kurdish people. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Yemen. Nobody talks about it in the same line. It's just like as though it never happened. But here, totally different standards. And even America is applying those uh, double standards on Israel now albeit because of uh, global pressure, but it's, it's the most maligned country. And I think it's, it comes from the fact, again, it goes back to anti-Semitism. All of these people, they just don't accept the existence of Israel. Israel Israel's first step is not to tell, hey, look, we're, we're the good guys. Israel's first step is to tell the world that, hey, guys, you all of you have your own country. We, ha we have a country too. Can you just look at us as a country? What is it? Half the world doesn't even recognize Israel or maybe, you know, a lot of countries don't even recognize Israel and here lies the problem. It's just, it's mind boggling. Mm -hmm. Saying in the park, violence was similar is like saying violent robbery is same as stealing a bicycle. Post-partition Hindus in Pakistan have dwindled to near zero, excluding Bangladesh. Muslims in India have grown. Um, Yes, there's some truth to that, but not the way you see it. A lot of Indians constantly misquote the numbers of Hindus in Pakistan. So the reason why they were, when we look at in 1947, the, the pop, pop, Pakistan's Hindu population was close to what I think 23% or something. Um, but that because a big chunk of those Muslims lived in Bangladesh. Okay, and then came 1971 or 1970 riots and all that. A lot of people left, went to India. So there was a major dip in um, in in the Hindu population of uh, of, of Indian Pakistan, uh, sorry, Indian Bangladesh. But then Bangladesh became its own country. So the number of Hindus living in um, in the western part of Pakistan, they are still they, they've actually grown in number, in literal number. The percentage has remained the same. So in, in 1947, Hindus in western West Pakistan were still about two percent, and they're still about two percent. So, so no, that that's not entirely true. But I understand the sentiment that that's not to negate the suffering of Hindus in both India and sorry, both in Pakistan and Bangladesh. There's no denying Pakistan is a terrible state when it comes to treating its minorities. Um, but, but yeah, but that that, that figure is 
grossly misrepresented. Samson's Bespoke Workshop became a huge YouTube member. Thank you very much. And Rasa sang again, saying in the park. Well, uh, oh, you've already done it. Yeah, I think it's the same one. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Was it doubling? Thank you for doubling it up. He actually paid ten dollars twice. The same message. Partition of Nigeria. Yeah or nay? I actually don't know much about it. Uh, you covered this. You, you, you've been covering this conflict uh, in your streams with AP. Uh, what's your opinion? Yeah. So basically, you have. Um... Nigeria is one of the most important places in the world as far as the expansion of Islam. Uh, we tend to think that everything stands or falls with Western nations and so on, where uh, you have the Mus you have the Islamic world and it has expanded in the past and has eventually reached places where it's been stopped. And the goal is to just keep is to keep pushing that line. So in India, you've got there. You can go to places where you've got majority Muslims on one side the, of the line and majority Hindus on the other side of the line. Mm -hmm. The Islamic goal is to keep pushing pushing that. Uh, but Nigeria is one of those areas where you have uh, uh, Muslim majority in the north, Christian majority in the south, and jihadis are trying to push further and further south with the goal of just taking over, uh, basically ethnically cleansing Nigeria, making a, a Muslim population. But that, it doesn't stop there. That doesn't stop there. The next step would be pushing continuing continuing pushing mm. south and so what do you do i mean christians are more christians are being killed for being christian in nigeria than the entire rest of the world combined and so what do you do about that um yeah Should i be. would yeah i i don't i don't see i i, I don't see another solution apart from islam just taking over i don't see another path other than like dividing it up and saying hey uh if you're muslim stay stay over on that side of the line if you're christian over here and we're gonna have north and south nigeria or something like that it's weird because i don't like i don't like like hey this is what has to be done like i don't i don't call any shots here but i don't see any other way forward unless unless islam just stops doing what it's doing so which is not going to happen but i have a question except uh, i i have a question follow-up question on that is we know that okay the, the west became civilized post second world war or even before that it, there was this industrial revolution etc so but before before um, modern times christianity matched islam aggression for aggression and uh, but then they leapfrogged every uh, leapfrogged everyone else. They became industrialized, and then the, then the era of colonization came, etc. But why in parts of Africa, it's only Islam that's violent, and Christians, African Christians, have also lost the tendency to protect themselves or be. Uh, I mean, you, you'd you'd imagine, like for example, in the in the Dark Ages, you'd, when 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 Muslims were invading uh, Christian lands. Christians were fighting back. Um, uh, otherwise, they, they would have been destroyed. So w w why why in Africa we see Christians are not as... I mean, they, why, why can't they match Muslims? Well, it's, it's going to... I mean, it's going to depend on the area. It's going to depend on the area because you do have you do have violent Christian militias and so on in certain areas. It's going to depend on what, what the people's background was in the area. But, uh, I mean, in Europe, you had... So you have Christianity for three centuries in Europe, and it never crosses a Christian's mind to be violent. Uh, very common for Christians to be pacifists and so on. Then you have the Roman emperor says, hey, I got a vision of a cross, and it's telling me conquer by this. And so conquer by the cross. And so then you end up with a Roman empire slash Christian hybrid entity. In other words, the it's not Christians decided one day, hey, we're going to be violent and expansionistic. It's the Roman Empire, which was already violent and expansionistic, adopts Christianity. And so now you have now you have both of these elements. You have you have Christianity and you have the Roman Empire is the way you run you run your countries and you run your empires. And so you had that's what you had. So for a while you have this uh, this hybrid thing and. You had a Christian influence. You also had a Roman uh, Empire influence, but it's not—it's not from within Christianity that you get the idea. Hey, we're, we have to go around uh, violently subjugating or or crushing our enemies or something like that. You don't—you don't have that anywhere in 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 Christianity emerging from it. You have human beings who are involved, and human mm. beings can have all sorts of different views on things. And so, 
uh, yeah, you had that pretty pretty early on. So in the fourth century, you get this Roman Christian hybrid thing, and right. then you watch that over time eventually start breaking down into different nations and Christians wrestling with these ideas and so on. Um, and a lot of, I mean, a lot of the responses where, I mean, if you have the Ottoman Empire invading, if you have the Ottoman Empire invading, it's probably going to make sense to you to say, no, we need to be, uh, we need to be on the fighting side of these things because uh, whatever. And, I mean, Christians. What whatever whatever bad things you want to point to and say, hey, you shouldn't have done this or you shouldn't have done that messed up thing or look what you did during during this crusade that was messed up as as many as as many of those things as you can point to. It, it's it is interesting that they always seem to understand whatever else happens, we're not going to be controlled by that. That we are not we are not letting that take over. Uh, we are not letting that take over uh, Europe. We're not doing it, and so that doesn't happen until now. Now's where we need as much of that to come in here to Europe as, as possible. All right. Okay. Uh, awesome, man. Where can I find your email? I think this is my email. Just, uh, that's my email. So me, send me an email there and we'll go from there. Okay. What's the other one? Okay. There's a couple more shifts saying new atheists are ridiculous. They keep changing every two years. Such a waste of life. Oh, look at this. You don't get, you don't get an extra breath. You don't get any extra brownie points for being com more compassionate. <laughs> so, um, I've been an atheist for nearly seven, 17 years. And as I said, um, um, yeah, I said, uh, I, I think that my, my psych psychedelic experience a couple of years ago probably made me made me a little bit more uh, uh, empathetic towards religious people. So I don't know. I, I think that's a good thing if you if you grow. Uh, as you get older, like I mean, I, yeah, when I became, I an think atheist, this I was... is. I think this is. Oh, I was thinking. I think this is going to happen more and more. I've seen a lot of people who are very hostile towards you know anyone good. who's not an atheist uh, fifteen years ago and so on, and they've mellowed out quite a bit. But I mean, keep in mind the new atheism was was a new thing. I was an atheist in the nineteen nineties, and atheists back then pretty it was pretty normal to for atheists to be like hey yeah you guys may be benefited by this we don't need that the rest of you may may need that and so that's great for for the rest of you and that's and that's totally fine then you got this uh aggressive this hyper aggressive thrust but i i don't think that's uh that's going to last because and i think uh you know with ion hersey i don't think you guys are are too far apart because when when we when you listen to what she said, it doesn't sound like a Christian in any normal Christian definition. It's just I've been significantly influenced by Christianity, and I think a a a Christian component in society is maybe actually good for dealing for standing against communism and Islam and stuff like that. And and so maybe I shouldn't be. But I've seen Richard Dawkins. I mean, it was back in 2012 when he said he had mixed feelings about the decline of Christianity, he said, because I think it may have been a bulwark against something worse. In other words, Did he say as, that? as much as I, I, yeah. I definitely missed that. Did he say that? Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's that good. Interview, my, yeah. my intellectual hero. I mean, I because I, uh, I was worried that he he wouldn't agree with this position that I'm having now. But yeah, that, that's good. I think that's very good. Yeah, I, I totally see, that. this goes this goes into human beings. They 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 will zero in on something they some aspect they don't like and want to do away with that and not think about what what else that is doing. And so, so we, we were talking about Saddam earlier, right? We had the mm -hmm. mentality, hey, get rid of Saddam. Um, get rid of Saddam. He's an evil tyrant. Guess what? I agree. I do not like Saddam. Horrible Stalin wannabe. Uh, not not a guy I would spot. ever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, would not would not like that dude. But so we think, hey, get rid of that guy and things will improve. Well, what else was Saddam doing? That was, jihadis were terrified of him. Because if you he, mess he with keeping, Saddam, yeah. there's, there's, there's going to be tanks rolling into your village the next day. And you don't want to deal with that. So he keeps them all terrified. So when you're thinking, let's get rid of Saddam, you need a plan also. What else is he doing that is actually beneficial to the area? Because we need to be able to replace that, uh, replace that function. And so, but we don't, we're not thinking of that. We're just thinking, ah, bad guy, get rid of him. And so we get rid of Saddam. We try to make like a, a Western, Western government, but guess what? The terrorists aren't, aren't scared of the new regime, the way they were terrified of Saddam. So they start blowing up each other's mosques. And we're wondering, why are these guys blowing up each other's mosques? What's going on here? Well, they wanted to blow each other's mosques up. They were just scared yeah. of this guy. And now they don't have a guy to be scared of anymore. And so they start blowing up each other's mosques and, oh, the government's going to, the new government's going to stop them. Uh-oh, now you get ISIS. 
And it's all, it's based, they were there. The, the people were there. It was already there. They were just, they mm -hmm. couldn't do what they wanted because they were terrified of some That's other enough. guy. But they, we're, we're always like that. And you see this in the history of like invasive species, like the being Australian say, hey, you know what we need down here? A rabbit. Paint Let's hopes. bring rabbits down here. And it destroys the ecosystem. Mm. But it's like that with, uh, you take something, so you can not like, let's say Christianity. And here are the things I don't like about Christianity, but it should be, it should be you're thinking, is Christianity doing other things that are actually beneficial? And maybe I need to figure out what, if I, if I want, if I want Christianity but, gone, I need to figure out how I'm going to re replicate those things. Uh, but that question that was may, regularly may asked. Be helpful. But that question was regularly asked back in the heyday of uh, Hitchens and Dawkins and Sam Harris. That that question was regularly asked. But we kind of assume that okay, we've already worked out, um, you know, why families are important, why we should be kind and nice to each other. We've already worked it out. So even if Christianity told us to be nice to each other or other local cultures, whatever, with their special certain side effects, but we've already worked out the good bits. So we can take the good bits. From our culture, from from our traditions, and then throw away the bad bits and severely damage it to a point where it can never make a comeback, and then we'll be fine. Everything will be fine. But but again, I think work. that that is something. Yeah, of course it didn't work. But my point is that we could never anticipate that. I I, I don't think anyone could have anticipated wokeism uh, the way it it yeah. kind of appeared. Um. So, e so e yeah. In, yeah. Oh no, I was I was just saying, and so. It was because it, you're pointing out you can't anticipate certain things. So if you're an atheist in the early 2000s and you're looking around, wait a minute, here's look at this professor here. He's an atheist. Here's a professor. Hey, we all get along well. What yeah. are you talking about? We have families. We don't yeah. need religion. Why does anyone else need this sort of thing? So why don't we just matter if we just get rid of it, everyone's going to be like us. And so you, you don't you don't know what hindsight is easier right we know what we know what was coming they didn't know what was coming now that they find now that uh people find out i don't know it seems like i i think the i think in the in the near future the next decade or two i think atheism is going to kind of go back to that like 1990s vibe of, yeah hey you got you guys if you're going to be religious as long as you're not killing us or something like that or doing something bad you're fine i don't need it but uh happy happy uh happy if you guys are, are so i could be ahead of the curve religion. so i could be ahead of the curve so you are you saying well all atheists will become like us well like you can do whatever you want like i mean as i said like i genuinely i have this i have similar feelings towards muslims as well i don't care you want to pray five times a day whatever i i don't want to spend my day telling you like how ridiculous your religion is i actually don't want to do that the only reason why i got caught up in muslims a because i i, I am an ex-muslim i have I mean, I, I know more about Islam than any other thing. Um, uh, but because of its direct impact on the society that I cherish so much, that's the only reason. That's my only bone of contention with them. I have no problem with them. So you're right. Like, I mean, let, let's hope it goes to that, uh, uh, that, that, that era where everyone's like, go do whatever you want. Well, yeah, you don't yeah, keep, it, yeah keep, keep in mind, you, you did have aggressive atheists. You had the, the organization American Atheist, and so you did have them. But it's kind of like your average atheist is like, why do you guys care so much? What do you, what do you care? What everyone, yeah. why, are you obsessed, why are you guys obsessed with controlling everyone else? And so I think it's going to – it's basically atheism shifted towards more hostile. I think it's going to dial back some. I think you're still going to have aggressive atheists, but I think a lot of like your average atheists will be like – Dude, but shut Roe up. We v... tried it. We tried it. But... It didn't work out. It didn't work out very well. No, but Roe v. Wade or those kind of things where, where you have aggressive Christians as well who, who, who want to get involved in the matters of the state. So don't you think then that, that would antagonize uh, atheists who would be otherwise peaceful or non-intrusive atheists? Don't you think that would antagonize them? And as a result, will 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 we'll, we'll remain in this tussle, in, in, in this tug of war? Uh yeah, it's possible. Because I mean, when we're when we're talking about uh predictions and so on and it really looks like everyone <laughs> uh, everyone is fragmenting everyone is fragmenting mm, into different groups mm. and are becoming increasingly hostile towards uh towards everyone else i'm just saying based on observations with uh ion harsey joe rogan just recently said we need jesus we need jesus now <laughs> it seems like and i remember him saying all religion is bs i remember him yeah, saying yeah, that yeah. oh hey we need we need jesus i, I oh, yeah. it's just a i think people's attitude towards religion is going to be softening uh a bit and uh that we'll tells see, you a we'll, lot we'll that tells you a lot about these 
these Wokistanis, like, doesn't it? Like, it has scared a lot of people. For the longest time, I just ignored. I remember when Jordan Peterson first burst onto the scene back in 2011 with this, mm. uh, you know, transgender movement and all this pronoun debate. I was like, I was like what is it? it doesn't even affect 0.1% of the world's population. It's not even, I'm not mm. even interested in that. Go away. I don't want to talk about it. I don't care. But then it just kept ballooning. And I know Christopher Hitchens talked about this. He was also one of the first people to identify that. But unfortunately, he died in 2011. He, he, he spoke about how these students had in, in, in college campuses are just absolutely losing their shit. Um, mm. But then he died. But did, we did not know that what kind of Frankenstein monster we were creating. And it, people like Richard Dawkins himself, like he doesn't get into this. Uh, he he, uh, he has a very strong opinion, kind of like me. No, it's not that strong. I, I, I don't care if you're a transgender or not, if you want me to call you with a certain pronoun or whatever. I don't, I don't care, but just don't impact my life or the lives of people that I care about. Don't get involved. And by the way, in, even yeah. even uh, even uh, Jordan Peterson, when he came out uh, uh, and started talking about this issue, it was pretty tame. It was a pretty tame position. He was saying, hey, if a student wants me to address him, her, whatever, by some pronoun, I will do that. I don't like the government telling me yeah, that I have to said. do this. That's my problem. That's pretty, that's like basic free speech stuff. Um, but yeah, then you look at what it what it morphed into. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it all it all looks like group dynamics to me with once you once you here's my group and you say, no, actually, I have a problem with this. Then, oh, well, you have a problem with this, but everyone has to agree with with us. And then they just they push each other. But they 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 grow increasingly extreme as the further they push each other apart. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Harris, are you Pashtun? If yes, it's true that it's uh, passed on from uh, from the previous generations that they are Bani Israel before moving to Afghanistan. I'm not, but Nuria Khan is, so she might give you a um, bit of a history on that. No Hindu went from Pakistan to Bangla. Almost all Hindus in Pakistan vanished. Undoubtedly, stop apologizing for Pakistan, bro. You're you're you're, you're a goose. Like seriously, if you, if you if you're gonna quote me that seriously, you don't know anything about it. Have a look at you the. Apologize. Have a have a look at the demographics, um, the, the the consistent surveys from fifty one, sixty one, and then there was no survey in seventy one, and then there were eighty one. Have a look, compare that with, keep that in your mind. West Pakistan and East Pakistan, there were two different entities, and most of the Hindus lived in the eastern part of Pakistan, which is Bangladesh. So yeah, um, great expectation. The world needs, uh, the world need is radical expansionist Buddhist. Mm, really? Yeah. Okay. Well. As long as nobody steps on my toes, I'm okay with that. Enlightened soul and infidel noodle is in the house. Big shout out to infidel noodle. Um, poor girl, she had to go through a lot with uh, this whole AA controversy where she was just she just spoke with apostate Aladdin and I don't know what, what happened. Sorry, apostate prophet and then yeah, uh, Starsky and Hutch. Who's Starsky? Okay. By the way, thank you everyone for your super chats. Okay, now I I, I just want to ask you some questions. So. Mm -hmm. uh, as you pointed out and you made me look into this position of um, you know the, the like the new atheist movement kind of promised this scientific utopia where everyone would be reasonable and and scientific minded but that didn't it didn't turn out that way and then i thought about how you actually i i never knew this about you i knew that your psychopathy had been brought up even by yourself but then some people were attacking you and there was this uh, old clip of yours you looked a lot younger where you were talking about um uh, when you attacked your father and how, what you felt at that time and then you went to jail for 10 years and then you were an atheist at that time and you met this christian guy and you were like that atheist like oh you know i don't kind of believe in that blah 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 and then you turned to uh, and, and that's where you became christian Mm -hmm. And the way you mentioned the whole episode with your dad, and I think your dad didn't believe that my dad would do that. And then when he came to see you in prison, you said, Dad, it was me. And I was like, oh, okay, but I forgive you. So that got me to thinking that in your case, do you think, A, there was a utility of Christianity or of some sort of a structured belief system because of your mental condition, or you actually did find faith per se like you just like because rationally because I, I see i still see you're a very rational guy you're 100 rational um whenever you look at 
we 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 arrive at similar conclusions, and but then obviously there's this big elephant in the room, which is Christianity and their miracles and the whole doctrine and theology behind that. So my question to you is: initially, did did Christianity get you at the lowest point in your life when you thought that maybe I need a structured doctrine or belief system to stay in line, or otherwise, you know, your your psychopathy would make you do something like that again, and that's the end of your life? Was that a con- conscious decision? Um, it was definitely the lowest point in my life. So <clears throat> this is, uh, I'd already been taken out of the regular jail block I was in because they thought I was trying to starve myself to death, even though I was just like in a fasting battle with this, uh, with this Christian, but I became obsessed with, uh, fasting. I don't mean like rum on fasting where I'm gorging myself. I mean, uh, the first time I ever fasted, I went 10 days on nothing but water. And then I ate for two days and then I went uh, another 10 days on nothing but, but water. Um, but I kept, uh, I kept doing that. I would eat for two or three days or something like that and then fast. And so, uh, I was probably 235 pounds when I went to jail and I got down to about 150, which at, at six foot three, I was looking pretty, uh, pretty, pretty pathetic. So there's, that's going on. Uh, I got, um, I had a shingles reaction because of a vitamin deficiency. So because I wasn't eating and getting any vitamins and it's, uh, and, uh, I got this rash all over, this rash all over my body, uh, horribly itchy. I couldn't stop drooling. Um, so there I am in the cell and yeah, it does. It did play a role in the sense that it wasn't, Hey, let me just, let me believe in something. Um, I was actually studying. I was, I was reading the gospels and, uh, reading some stuff just because I was, I mean, it was, it was like later when I was, uh, when I was friends with Nabil, there's a guy, we have a different position and we argue all the time, but there was a guy like that who was, uh, who was in jail with me and he was a Christian. And so we're arguing all the time. And so I'm studying just so I can know what I'm talking about too. So again, same as, same as later on with Nabil and he's using arguments from Sahih al-Bukhari and I want to, I, so I start studying Sahih al-Bukhari to respond to those, uh, to respond to those arguments. So at that point, I'm just studying. Uh, I'm just studying Christianity because I'm arguing with a Christian all the time. But yeah, there were those three issues and I I, I brought them up in my uh, my video that I made about this, but it was a it was a kind it was a kind of design argument and it was just looking around at the at the blocks in the cell I was in and me thinking no one ever gave me good reasons to believe that life can form on its own. I was just told that it did. Uh, but if I, you know, if someone told me these, this room went into this arrangement, these blocks went into this arrangement on their own by natural processes, wind or something like that, I, I think that's like insane. That's idiotic. And yet someone could just tell me that because the person's, you know, a teacher in, you know, 10th grade biology, they tell me that and I just believe that. So that didn't convince me that everything is created. It got me wondering, like, did I buy into stuff that was not actually shown to me? And this is actually plays a role in decisions. So there was that. There was the resurrection that really started bothering me because I thought I had explained Christianity in my in my mind that Jesus had a bunch of followers. He died. They wanted to keep the movement going. So they make up this story about him um, rising from the dead and so on to keep the movement going. That's what I thought. I find out how these guys go to their deaths. And then I think that doesn't sound like people who made it up. And so you need some other explanation. And then the other was a kind of moral argument that there was just always this conflict that I believe everything was just completely pointless. Like, I mean, to the point where like, it's a, it's a joke that anyone takes it seriously. There's this huge universe and there's this little speck that's our sun and this tiny little dot that's our planet. And these just stupid blobs of cells that are going to last a few years and be gone. And we think that everything we do is this super important stuff. It's like, are you serious? Like that's, that's, that's insane. And idiot. you're a blob of cells. It was only there because a bunch of random stupid stuff happened and then your your ancestors did a better job banging than everything than uh, the other organisms around you and that's why you're there and suddenly like every thought that pops in your head is is uh, super important uh, but I, I i believed that like it's all it's all a joke morality any rule you can come up with in your, in, in your head of don't do this don't do that it's a it's a giant it's like stupid that you think that way uh but simultaneously i held that like i was the new stage of humanity uh, and I'm the most important thing in the world. And it was just, those things don't go together. You can't say, I am the, I'm the most important, meaningless blob of cells. And so it's just, uh, I, I started thinking and it was kind of, it's along the lines of, 
uh, okay, either there's like some some standard or some basis for for what is uh, right or wrong and good and bad or something like that, or there isn't. If there isn't, then it makes no sense for me to think that I'm important in the grand scheme of things at all. If there is some standard, like what is what are the odds that I'm actually the the pinnacle of humanity, right? In other words, if there is some standard of what's good and bad, what are the odds that this guy sitting in a cell drooling all over the place uh, with a rash all over his body who refuses to eat? What are the odds that this is the greatest man in the world? Like it was like ridiculous, but that got me thinking in terms of like moral argument, and then with the design argument, and then the resurrection. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, this is proven to me. It just made me doubt my confidence that I'd had before, that I had all this stuff figured out. And so it started leaning in that direction, like, well, gosh, maybe there is a point to all this stuff. Uh, maybe there is a creator and maybe there is a moral law and I violated it. And if Jesus did rise from the dead, then uh, I don't know, then, well, if there's if there's anyone if there's anyone in history that could help with uh, my situation, it'd probably be that guy. And then so at, at that point, it was just what have I got to lose here? Like what if I bow down and pray and nothing happens and nothing changes? It's not like I'm getting any worse. But like why wouldn't why wouldn't I just try? Why wouldn't I try that? So it was kind of it was kind of just experimental. Like I've got nothing to lose. I'm already as pathetic as I could possibly be. Um, I'm about to be sent to my third mental hospital. What if I pray and nothing happens? Well, I'm, I'm in the exact same boat. And so, so I prayed. So, uh, hold, hold on to that, because <laughs> so this is exactly what I thought that might have happened to you, because obviously you're in, your, in, in a low point in your life. And and as we discussed earlier, that you and I we both can look at the same piece of information and we could arrive at totally different conclusions. Like, I mean, you thought about this argument about, um, you know, the, the design argument or something. Someone must be there, the moral argument, etc. And and I'm sure you would be aware of uh, atheistic arguments on that too. So I'm trying to work out why would you sway to one side of the argument or, or so one conclusion rather than the other conclusion. So so uh, I'm I'm wondering that how much of a role people's own individual circumstances can play into them arriving at a certain conclusion, which, as I said, an atheist would look at uh, a tree or a mountain or something, would arrive at a totally different conclusion. And, 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 I'm, and I'm sure you understand those arguments. So I'm wondering if your mental state had a role in forcing you to believe uh, in Christianity. No, this... Uh, to, to be... When I was fasting and starving and about to be sent to my third mental hospital, guess what? Mental hospitals are fun. Mental hospitals are fun. And so this wasn't, oh, no, I'm about Compared to be sent to jail. Compared to jail or in general? Both. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very, very fun, entertaining places. I mean, I mean, jail sucks. Prison's fun. Prison's fun. Um, so it's none of, it's none of, it's not, oh, I want to uh, avoid this particular uh, consequence or something here. It's more, it's more along the lines of, I see where this path goes. And if I'm wrong about this, then it's very, it's, it's, it's very important. If I'm, in other words, if Jesus is Lord, if there is God and so on, and I'm staying on this path, that's actually bad. Um, and I, I'm thinking of it in terms of uh, William James. He wrote, uh, he wrote something called The Will to Believe. That it's, uh, some of the stuff you're saying is uh, kind of reminding me of that. But he points out that like there are certain situations where you have you, it's a forced decision. You have to make a decision. You can't just put mm -hmm. it off. Like ordinarily, if you're if you're an agnostic, you say, okay, Islam or Christianity or atheism, whatever. You can say, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Uh, figure it out some other time. Whereas there are other times where, no, you actually have, you, you kind of have to make a, a decision. There's something that's going on where you have to actually mm -hmm. make a decision. Like, like right now, I can either continue sitting here or I can get up. I, I have to, I have to do one. It's not a, it's not something that, that can be put off. I can choose to just sit here, but that's, I, I make, I'm making a decision. And so uh, he, he compared this, he, he quoted a passage, um, uh, something Fitz, James Fitzpatrick or something like that. Uh, but the guy was saying, Imagine you're on a snowy, you're, imagine you're on a snowy mountain and you can't tell which is the correct path in front of you. He said, you have to pick one because otherwise you just stand there and you freeze to death. So you have mm -hmm. to, you have to actually pick a path and go with it. And again, with me, it's, uh, there was no, like I, I sit here and say how messed up I was. That was not, it was not, oh, I'm so messed up. I need to get out of this. It's okay. I'm messed up. And it's, it's kind of fun. 
And, but I want to, I don't want to be wrong if I'm just spending the rest of my life like this and I just say, screw everything. And I'm going to go live in, you know, mental hospitals and prisons and so on. And that's just going to be my life. Uh, if, if, if something else is correct, then I would, I would want to know it. And it was just kind of, well, I, I can just pray and see what happens and see if that kind of gives me an indication or something like that. So it was, I had, there were, there were arguments involved and there's a situation involved. And then I pray and then I get up from the, the entire world looked different. I, 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 I've said that previously. I got up yeah. from praying the entire world looked like it was a different color. Like everything yeah, had I, changed, I, like, like the I, lens had been taken off. Yeah, yeah, so I'm I, saying I, you, you would you yeah. would you would say, hey, there's some psychological impact or something like that, uh, or you know, from an atheist perspective. Mm -hmm. But uh, but so there was there was that. I had leading up to that pretty regular, just completely delusional thinking processes. Um, you know, mm -hmm. again, like 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 thinking I controlled the weather, thinking just very very delusional thoughts. Those just stopped right there. They they stopped. They eventually they eventually came back in some different context, but for the time being, they stopped for at least probably year and a half, two years. What didn't mm. change was I would still definitely have put myself in the psychopath uh, category. I didn't have normal emotional reactions. Uh, my entire family could have died. It wouldn't have, it would have uh, bothered me at all as far as like my feelings. Uh, so that didn't change. But. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, so, 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 if you're if you're if you're talking about like the the actual the role that you know a belief the might play, in the, yeah, yeah that, the that actual it, role that it played. Yeah, I have to say, I have I have to absolutely say. I mean, I mean, think about this. It's I spend my entire life getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, and worse until I'm basically a lump in a cell, being wait mm -hmm. wait being uh, about to be sent off to some other place where they can, where I can just be, where they can just drug me up and, and leave me there or something like that. And I get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Hey, uh, maybe I'm wrong about this stuff. Let me pray. And then everything changes. Mm. And then, you know, here I, here I am years later. I can't, mm. as, as much as, as much as we want to, we want to talk about arguments and stuff. You're right. People do have individual experiences. Like you could give, you could, we could argue all day long about design mm. arguments or moral argument or something like that. No. It's still in my head. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. I said a prayer and that, and then everything changed after that. Yeah. I, I can't get her. I can't, from my personal perspective, that doesn't play a role in anyone else's view. From my uh, personal perspective, that is, that was a pretty, that's a pretty significant piece of the puzzle there. Yeah. No. And, and. And that's perfectly fine. And this is well, I, I I see it's futile to even dis even go through those arguments. But um, so so I'm thinking here that had you not ha had you not have this condition, and had you not done what you ended up doing to your dad, and not ended up in prison, mm -hmm. in another world you probably had your life not turned out the way it did. You in another world you would have stayed on. Uh, lived on as an atheist as you were prior to that event, and as you said, like yep. William Lane Craig said, there comes a point. So you were pushed in this, in, in, in this um, narrow street where you had to make a choice, either go there or there, forced by circumstances that were out of your control. So I'm thinking you're you're basically uh, warmed up to the idea of Christianity or God or moral arguments, not necessarily consciously, but because you were, you were forced into it by your circumstances and then once again it must have been really comforting and it, it must have done amazing things for you and that's why when the moment you prayed you felt a difference because for example when i was going through the experimental stage obviously my story is not as strong as that like i, I used to talk to allah all the time i used to ask allah hey allah if you're real just give me a sign just send me a sign just make me Make me, um, give me an itch over my right shoulder or something, so I can I, I scratch it and that'd be something. Oh, I just scratched the side, <laughs> and itch came. So when you're thinking about something, and a lot of time, a lot of the times it actually did happen. I did get this itch on my. Sometimes it'll be a wrong shoulder or something because my mind is trying to disprove it, but at the same time I'm willing to see there's something going on. So, but in your case, obviously your your situation was a lot more extreme. So. That's what I'm thinking, of course, and with, with all due respect, obviously, each, uh, as I said, like, I have no interest in telling people that you're wrong, your experiences are wrong, or you're, you're wrong with your religion. I, I don't even feel the need to say that with Muslims either. Um, 
but so how how did it actually change when you said that when you prayed everything was different like what was it what was that experience like um uh because now i i see that okay you you have this tendency to believe more in christianity because you think that that can you've got nothing to lose your life would be better otherwise oh sorry before we go to that do you think that had you not had you not found found christianity you would have been you would have ended up hurting someone or you would have your life would have gone even gotten even worse uh pretty much certain <laughs> oh i was gonna mm-hmm. i was gonna hurt some other people that was yeah that was a matter of time um, so that's what I'm saying. Was, so it's, yeah. it's actually a good thing that you found Christianity. So in in in, in like I, I I don't think yeah, any I had, would say. I had I had a list of people that I wanted to kill going back to kindergarten, like going right. back to kindergarten. Kid pinch me. If I kill everyone else on this list, I'm I'm going back and and get it and finding that kid. But in your case, uh, so, it was so tailor made. But in your case, it was so tailor made. So uh, so so one could argue that Christianity is good for psychopaths. I mean, psychopaths mm-hmm. need Christianity. But if you're not a psychopath, then the worst you can do is be a blue head woke. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, yeah. So if I were looking at this from an atheist, and I've had atheists tell me that, I think Matt, Matt Dillahunty uh, said it. Uh, he's like, I'm glad you're a Christian. And mm. so you can look at this from a purely, I don't believe it. I don't believe uh, any of this stuff, but I'm glad you believe it because if you mm. don't believe it, you don't have any sort of emotional reactions to killing and slaughtering people. And so if you believe it's wrong because you believe in Jesus, then then that's uh, that's good. But uh, no, it, it wasn't. Uh, again, when, when I talk about, you know, this is the low point in my life. It wasn't, oh, I need to be rescued from there was something really really fun about this it was like i was constantly being stripped away uh like like everything that there's this uh, there's this weird obsession when i was growing up of like you're being programmed by things to think in certain ways and me thinking i'm beyond all of this why are you guys telling me what to do and what to think and over time i have to like cleanse myself of pollution from the rest of the world. Like the world is polluting me and I need to cleanse myself of that. And that's part of the part of the thing of like breaking laws and doing crimes and so on. It's like, oh, you're telling me I can't do this. Now I want to go, now I want to go do it. Mm. And so it's just constantly stripping away everything I've been taught. And then, you know, I eventually get more and more and more. And it's like, I do not have to live according to your system at all. I can sit yeah. here, I can sit here in jail or a mental hospital and do whatever I want, think whatever I want. I don't have to follow any rule, any punishment you want to give me, I can take. And what? I can just spend the rest of my life like this. It was just, is that actually, is that actually correct? Is that, is, is this, is this some sort of correct path for me or something like that? And it was just, I want to, well, I, I would want to, uh, I'd want to double check on that. And it was just, let's, uh, if anyone, if anyone, if anyone can fix this situation and show that there's like some some clear, it would, I'm would go, gonna go with the guy who looks like he may have risen from the dead, and so let me go with that. And then tried it out, and what do you know? Everything everything did change. And so yeah, from an atheist perspective, I think you say yeah, psychopaths need Jesus, even if you don't believe that that's true, because uh, I, I think I'd be a pretty pretty different person right now. But but another question I want to ask is so 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 what so obviously so you obviously believe in Jesus and divinity and all of that but what stops you from 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 doing all the bad things that you you are capable of doing is it the fear of retro hell or 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 you or you just think that morally it's been determined by a supernatural force that this is wrong because then I would say that. Could you not morally convince yourself otherwise without um, a, a, a divine, all-powerful being? Yeah. So what? Cha- no, there's no. It's not. Oh no, I'll be punished for this, and therefore let me do this or that. Uh, that that plays. As far as I can't think of any role that plays in my thinking. It's uh, and keep in mind. So just to be clear, because everyone's like, "Ah, oh, you're saying atheists are like this." No, I'm saying how I was. I'm not saying anything else. And I understand my thinking was very, very different from the vast majority oh, of atheists. But as far as how I thought, uh, I mean, I was also like, uh, I don't know. I just thought there was something disgusting about human beings being these just blobs of cells and thinking that they're they're 
like everything, like the universe revolves around them. It was just like, like insane. And they're like, I want to like punish you for it. I want to like go around massacring you, you morons for thinking this way that change it. When I become a Christian, it, it, that changes to, it changes from you're a bunch of stupid, idiotic, disgusting blobs of cells to you guys are actually created in the image of God and Jesus, uh, God loved you so much that Jesus died on the cross for your sin. Okay, I don't, I don't get to treat you the way I would have treated you before. I don't. Yeah, but it's a it's rational just... decision from you. But it's a rational, conscientious, made decision by you because you're saying that you can't feel many emotions. So it can't mm -hmm. be like, okay, Christianity just made you love atheists and infidels or whatever. So it, it's it, it's a decision that you made in your mind that mm -hmm. okay, this is how things are ought to be and why because the Bible says so. So I'm yep. saying that if you could be if you could be rationally convinced, then why could you not be convinced uh, of the same thing without the Bible? In theory, you could you could convince me that. So what 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 you're what you're talking about is is there is there an actual basis for morality that you could have without? Uh, mm, without Christianity. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure what that would look like, but it has to have certain requirements. If you're talking about, so you could have like a moral Platonism. So Plato's idea of the good, there could just be some like standard of the, of the good out there that can give you like a standard of, of good and bad. Uh, as far as basic moral obligations, those are usually expressed as commands, right? Like don't kill, don't do this, don't steal. Uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. They're they're ex they're most naturally expressed as commands, and so from an atheistic perspective, it's like, what is the source of those commands? What could the source of those commands be? Telling you yeah, the, this is what yeah, you're yeah. this is what you're supposed to do. And so it, the uh, the obvious conclusion the obvious conclusion to draw, if you're an atheist, this is the conclusion I drew is society is the source of those 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 commands society tells me do this don't do that do this don't and you you get told your entire life do this don't do that do this don't do that and you think oh this is uh these are the these are just the rules but if you're actually questioning those rules the same way i mean think about this if you if you apply the same reasoning to a moral claim don't torture old ladies for fun if you apply the same skepticism to that that you would apply to like the the existence of God and say, wait, you know, I have never seen God. Uh, I think that lots of people who believe in God, they're just told to believe in God. So they absorb it that way. You say the exact same thing about that moral rule. You just, you were told this your entire life and you believe it. I can't see this moral law. It makes no sense for me to think that there's some moral obligation coming from anywhere other than our own heads. And why do I obey that versus any other claim that I could have? So no, if you apply the empathize. same- if No, but we can empathize in that case. We, we, we can I see can. that this is not what I want. Right. Yeah, no, I know, I get it. No, 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 I, I, I get it. You're, you're obviously. We've already agreed that you probably need. I'm glad that you, you, you're, you're a Christian. But I'm saying, rationally, we, it's a very. You, you can very easily arrive at a conclusion that you should don't torture old lady for fun, or, or, or even. An and you can, for yeah, fun. you can have, you can have, you can have the empathy. You can, you can have empathy and say, well, I wouldn't like it if someone's doing that to me. So I'm not yeah. going to, I'm not going to go out and, and do that. Yeah, of course you can. You can conclude, you can conclude as an atheist that you're going to spend your entire life doing nothing but helping other people and serving other people. You can do that. It's just there's nothing there's nothing that's like compelling you to do that. You, yeah, you can't. No, no, I I like it's like yeah. yeah, it's like it's like to for, to me it's like uh imagine you had this uh I brought this up in a debate years ago. I think I forget what I said. I said, "Imagine this imagine you have a culture that like worships frogs or something like that. They're, and so they start imitating the frogs and they hop around and they live on lily pads and they eat flies because they're trying to worship these, uh, trying to worship frog, frog frog. because they worship frogs and so on. But then imagine you have skeptics come along and they say, ah, we don't worship those, those frogs anymore. And someone says, well, how are you going to keep up the practice? And like, well, of course we could keep up the same practices. We, we don't need to believe in the frog God in order to hop down to the lily pad. We don't have to believe in the frog God to eat flies. We don't have to believe in this stuff. It's like, yeah, you can, you can do all the exact same stuff, but why do you, why do you then, why do you do it? Um, if you don't believe in that anymore, why do you do it? It wouldn't, in other words, it wouldn't make sense to say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to live on a lily pad and, and eat flies and, and hop around apart from the the fact that you worship this this frog god and so on so 
once you once you do away with the the concept of something that that grounds morality and it just becomes hey me from my personal perspective how am i going to live yeah you can decide hey i'm going to be the nicest person in the world you can decide hey this is all pointless and why if i can get away with something i'm i'm going to get away with it uh you can conclude you can conclude anything yeah, yeah but that again like that would specifically apply on you because in your analogy if i'm if i understand that correctly it's like okay well you, now there is no need for you to act like frogs because you don't you no longer believe in um in in the frog god well that's true but and and they were doing something that was exclusive to only people who do believe in the frog god whereas but that assumes a position that in order for us to be kind and moral to other people we need to believe in god and in in other words no, like frog no, hopping no, was I, no i believe i believe yeah i believe I believe yeah, you can well, again, we, you can be as moral as you want, and you could be in right. God, believe in God and be a total scumbag. Right, right. So uh, yeah, so um there was another point that I wanted to make. No, so so yeah, you said that it, it it's grounded in commands like morality, but commands alone are not useful unless they come with some sort of a some sort of repercussions for not obeying those. But you already said that you you you, you don't do that out of fear of hell and it's, it's a big thing no, in islam it, as well like don't be don't do that because you're going to go to hell and then if you take that away from muslims then muslims will be raping and pillaging and everything that that's a common muslims argument but i think uh -huh. your your argument is a bit more advanced than that so you're not afraid no, it's, of it's, yeah no it's it, no it's not about repercussions it's what is the status of the command so if i'm told if i'm told when i'm growing up uh don't needlessly inflict harm on someone else or something like that. So some version of that. Uh, what is the status of that? Is it just something that you made up or that society made up? And I don't think that society is a, is an authority over me. Um, what, what is the status of that? If it, if it's actually some, on some level, reason, divine, is reason not good enough. Is reason not good enough though? But again, I, like in I your no, case, I have, I have no idea how you would get from, from just reason to, I mean, that's like, that's the. I, I, that's I don't want to be treated. That's, that's the is. I don't want to be tortured. Yeah, no, but I, I don't want to be tortured. So again, as I, I can understand. So no, so what I'm a, Yeah, yeah, no, um, no, be, no, because if, when we when we're creating a society, we would want to make sure that we mm -hmm. develop certain laws or principles so we can uh, ensure everyone is looked after. So yeah. I, so it doesn't happen to me. Uh -huh. So it, it, it seems yeah. like a very reasonable yeah, place. And you can people throughout history. You can have done no, that. You, yeah, and you can you you can yeah you can. So you can make those kinds of claims. You can say, hey, we've got a kind of social contract here. We don't want to live in just total anarchy because uh, that's going to suck. So we're going to, hey, I, I have I have certain ways that I can't, I have certain things that I can't do and you have certain things that you can't do. Of course you can. Of, of, of course you can do that. And you say, here's the rules. You can come up with lists and say, here are the rules that I'm going to follow. And you can say, here's my society and my society functions well because everyone is following these rules you, of course you can do that and you could you could be completely reasonable and say here the, i'm going to follow all these rules and i'm going to spend my life following these rules mm. what i'm saying is if you just say Through compulsion though i i just i just don't care i just don't care about this and i don't i why why am i or just think about a situation where you think you can actually get away with it right you think hey uh, that person left some money over there no one knows i'm here no one no one has any clue that i know where that money is i can go take it Society's but not you, breaking down because of that. Society's not breaking down uh, because of that. The society will continue to function just fine. My point is, yeah, you can. What you're actually saying, according in in your moral framework that you just described, is, um, hey, it's actually to my benefit if I follow these rules, and so I'm going to spend the life following these rules. What if you what if you just don't care? Because that's the situation I was in. I don't I don't care about fitting in. No, no, society. but I'm saying I don't, but you care, would apply I don't care about living. In fact, in fact, I, I thought it was like absolutely insane. Like if if you wanted to say, I mean, it's just this idea, hey, you're born, they're gonna send you to kindergarten, they're gonna spend all these years in school, then you're gonna do what? Then you're gonna learn a trade, you're gonna go to college or something like this, and then you're gonna spend uh, you know, another couple decades I got the working, point. build a house, and then you, you got another 20 years of oh, it hurts when I pee, and then you die. And it's just looking at that going. Why would I want to do that? Why? That's, yeah, what, yeah, but, that's what society says I'm supposed to live. Why am I going to follow that? Yeah, pattern? but then you could apply that. Yeah, but you could apply that. I don't care. Why would I? Why would I care? You can apply that on on in the case of an all loving God's case as well. Like, why do I care? Like, God's telling me to do this. Why do I care? You could, I but mean, there, 
there you're rejecting something there you would be rejecting something that has some sort of legitimate authority over you my problem was not was not uh listening to an authority it's i didn't believe there was any real authority over me if you say oh society has these rules well uh, so did i mean nazi germany had rules was it just because the society tells you this you're going to actually uh follow this the point is authority as well. yeah i don't i don't i don't think other human beings no you have a kind of authority like society has an authority in the sense of hey if you do this but it's uh, more then practical, we will then then we will punish you or something like that. Yeah, you can have that. But the point is, if I, that's that's something very different. That's something, hey, you guys came up with and a different society could come up with the exact opposite. Why am I following this? Well, just because I'm born here, that's very different from the creator of the universe apply has, that on religion issued, as well. has issued a command. But we could apply that on religion as well. Like if you were born in Pakistan, well, probably you, you you would have accepted. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I'm, not, I'm not, this is, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not I'm not saying just the idea, the idea is the idea that this comes from God. I'm saying hypothetically, if a command is if the status of this command that I've been told is right. actually from God, I can still reject it. I can still say I don't care, but I it's 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 real in a way that it's not if some if some fellow human being just made it up. Or a collection of fellow human beings. Okay. So so again, like it, it, it's heavily the starting position is is a heavy supposition that it is the creator of the universe, and and, and again, but anyway, I I don't I don't want to go any further into that. But what I wanted to ask you, so so I'm getting the impression that had you not been a psychopath, then mm. is it is it really possible that you would have been an atheist? It's quite possible. I I think. Yeah, if I hadn't uh, if I hadn't uh, gone off the deep end and gone to jail and mental hospitals and prison, I I, I have no reason to think that I wouldn't have just stayed an atheist. Mm, right, right. Like there was there was there was nothing that there was nothing there was nothing like compelling me to to change your ways or anything. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, right, right. So it's, okay. Yeah, wow, that's fascinating, actually. Um, okay, let's just, uh, is it, we're crossing three hour 10. We'll just finish it with these uh, super chats and then we'll go, uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up. It's been an absolute pleasure, David, talking to you. Atheism plus made atheism cringe 10 years ago. Atheism plus made I think it, atheism. May, maybe the new atheism is atheism plus, so it's not just, uh, yeah. it's not oh, just right. atheism, it's atheism plus. Right, right. I don't know. I, at least oh. I. That's one would would, you, I would you actually give it, a, give it the credit of. Like being really one of the most influential movements in our at least modern history. Like, I mean, a few guys just they just thought, okay, well, we're gonna write the a new few atheism. Books. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It, yeah. Huge, yeah. Ma massive. Massively. Uh, I don't think it's for good in the long run, but yeah, they made a huge impact okay. on the world. Mm. And 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 keep in mind, and keep in mind, even in Muslim countries, when we talk about mm. five to ten percent of uh, people in Muslim Saudi. countries actually being actually being closet atheists, that was a lot. That came out of that came out of uh, so. As far as shaking people, a lot of people's confidence in Islam and so on, yeah, a lot of that had to do with the uh, the new atheists. I didn't get a chance to ask you, but do you do, how are you seeing the evolution of ex-Muslims in the Muslim world? I mean, we haven't had any new fresh surveys to look at yet, but mm -hmm. we've had. Uh, I mean, the signs were pretty good until 2018, 2019, and then we we had this reemergence of these Dawa gangs and initially mm -hmm. there was this panic amongst them every mm -hmm. second Muslim Dawa gangs was saying oh look at this our kids are crying uh, go, turning mm -hmm. to atheism blah 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 mm -hmm. Muhammad Ijab, you're finished boy you know like there was this mm -hmm. panic but they have do you think they have regained some ground no. or at least on the surface or at least on the face no. of it that hey look you know like look at this <laughs> white person converted to Islam 5,000 people in Britain converted to Islam but we don't have any numbers to look at well hang on 50,000 Muslims don't take Islam seriously either. They're borderline atheists. Mm -hmm. how, how are you seeing this? Yeah, the the reason, I mean, the increase in uh, the popularity of Da'is is, uh, I think that is totally connected to the state of panic that they're in. In other words, if you're a Muslim and you still take Islam seriously and you see the, uh, the apostasy rate of young people, young Muslims go from basically 0% 20 years earlier to 24 percent that is a that is a massive a massive mm -hmm. steep increase and you're looking at that and you're going uh hey if i sit back and do nothing this what is it going to be like 35 percent 40 percent another five years there's going to be like 50 percent what what's mm -hmm. what's going on here so uh i also talked about this recently in a live stream if you go back 20 years the basic 
the basic position for Muslims who are paying attention to these issues is we don't actually have to do anything. We can sit back and watch and we will dominate the world just by birth rates. In other words, yeah. we do nothing. We sit here and do nothing. <laughs> we win. Yeah. We win yeah. by doing nothing. That was the attitude. But now yeah. with the avalanche of apostasy, that changed too. Wait a minute. Look at the look at how uh, the apostasy rates are exploding. If we sit back and do nothing, we lose. We don't win by birth yeah. rates. We we don't we don't win by birth rates. We lose if we do nothing. So we have to do something right now. And what do you do? This this ties into what I was saying earlier. If you think your your beliefs are 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 in danger, if you think your 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 tendency is to join a group, and so what do they do? They rally around whatever Dawa guy claims that he's going to rescue the future generations of Muslims from uh, from apostasy, and they cling to them because there's nothing else to cling to. There's a reason they cling to like I mean, we would look at like Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa, seriously. Daniel Hakikachu, a guy like the guy who defends pedophilia. That, these are the guys you're clinging to. They have nothing else to cling to. And then you wonder, like, wait, Andrew Tate? That's your new hero? Wait, <laughs> Sneeko? Sneeko? Are you are you kidding? Sean yeah. King, like the least reliable people on the planet, and you're clinging to these? They're just absolutely desperate. And so we look at it, and you know, they cling to people who are thumping their chest. Ha ha, we're strong, yeah. we're strong than the rest of you. So it looks like, oh wow, they've got People are rallying around this this guy who's uh, he's owning the kufar and ha 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 ha. But the the uh, silver lining is this is kind of like it's kind of like their last, them. yeah, like ah, it's it's this or nothing. Okay, so if that doesn't work out, what do you got? It's the same. It's the same thing with Hamas, and it's connected to Iran and so on. You're looking at Iran. I mean, closing thousands of mosques and so on because people don't believe. And there was that mm -hmm. poll that said that 40 percent of Iranians yeah. still believe in Islam. You're looking at that and saying we can't continue. We have to do something right now. And so, OK, well, let's 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 start a big fight. And maybe this will this will help Muslims rally around an Islamic cause and stop becoming Unite apostates. Them and something. Everyone's yeah. Yeah, everyone's trying the same thing. It's hey, we are in trouble if we sit back and do nothing. So we've all got to do something. And guess what? If it doesn't work, then I think there, I don't think there's a plan B. Yeah, it, it's a very good point you made. Like, I mean, for for hundreds of years, for many centuries, you know, in order to be a Dai, in order to be a scholar or a propagandist or a apologist or something, you had to go through these courses and become a mufti, etc. You had to do all of that. But now... Um, you know, these guys like Muhammad Jabz, Ali Dawes, they're not formally trained. Yes, they're self-taught, whatever. And then, the, but they bring their own personality uh, to it. And then, you know, like whoever thumps his chest uh, loudest and who can be more outrageous mm -hmm. and who can rally more people ar around him and be more yeah. antagonistic and provocative. Oh, and those are yeah. the people they're rallying to. What happened to the good old days of Yasir Qadis and Shabir Ali's mm -hmm. and, you know, like, uh, yeah. and, like, and that's like those, a, that's were, another... those were scholars. That's another big, big, uh, big issue is that if you go back 20, 25 years ago, their da'is were selected based on who's going to make the best presentation to non-Muslims, right? Who's going to mm. be most compelling to non-Muslims? And the recent decade has been who is going to impress Muslims most, right? So note, it, it shifted. Once you when you when you don't have a ton of a pot, you don't have people leaving Islam, you focus on on uh doing da dawah people, yeah. to to the to the other people and so you you choose people based on that once you've got this avalanche of apostasy now your main focus is rallying people rallying muslims and getting them to avoid leaving islam and so they went from picking people who are impressive to a non-muslim audience to picking people who are impressive to a muslim audience and not realizing the people they're picking are pretty, pretty <laughs> awful. I mean, like the worst people in the world. Yeah. We, got, well, we got Andrew Tate and Ali Dawa, like the dumbest, worst, wow. uh, like like human traffickers and stuff like that. Like the worst people you could pick from a from a non-Muslim perspective. They're clinging to them and they just, uh, yeah, no plan B. And so, so it's just, and you mentioned, you mentioned, hey, these guys can, can uh, become popular very, very quickly online and so on. But guess what? Narcissists. Those are the people who will go into that situation. Narcissists yeah. are great at diverting attention to themselves and making yeah, themselves man. the the heroes of the position. And look at that, Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa, uh, Sheikh Uthman. These guys are all like clinical. I mean, if you gave them tests, if you gave them tests, they would they would be they would be labeled with narcissistic personality disorder. 
And so they put, they put, they, they bring all the attention to themselves. They look at any situation and how can I get, how can this benefit me? And the Muslims are rallying around them because look, he's getting so much attention and they're, they're on these shows and they've got these huge platforms and so on. Not realizing guys, you're clinging to people who are in it for themselves. And those people will not, will not keep improving your status. They're going to, they're eventually going to declare war on everyone else because each one of those guys wants the attention for themselves. You've even seen this. These, yeah. We call it the well, Dawa yeah. Wars. He the Dawa guys start. Yeah. The, guy, the Dawa himself. guys start flipping yeah. out on each other. Why? Because they they want the attention. They want to be at the top by themselves. Well, they and, want to be uh, the top. It's not going to happen. It's going to crumble. It's yeah. going to crumble. They, they eventually are going to declare war more and more on each other. The whole system's coming crumbling to the ground. Hijab himself said uh, recently that, oh, vanity is disliked by Allah, that, you know, this is my major problem. Like, I think he even said that yeah, people think? with excessive pride are central. <laughs> and, yeah, but these guys are the representatives. And and you're right. I think it must be coming from the position of desperation that these people are like, hang on a second. We are so crumbling. I saw my cousin. My cousin wears these modern Western clothes. My other cousin doesn't believe in anything. The other cousin drinks alcohol. We are crumbling. So we need to hold on to anything that we can to mm -hmm. save our house of cards from falling because mm -hmm. these ex-Muslims, apostates, they don't fear us anymore. And yes, the world has changed a lot. They can't come and kill each and every one of us. I mean, they tried. Um, mm -hmm. pe people they could reach out to, Shiv Gabers and those bloggers in Bangladesh and all these. Like When I first started, I mean, there was this extreme arrogance from a lot of proper Muslim apologists who were like, how dare you don't fear us, man? Like, you guys don't fear us anymore. That, that was a major blow to them, that the fear factor is gone. Now, obviously, now we're going to become more and more brazen, and it's just human nature that it's just going to keep happening that way. So one more question on that. So we've seen how the spread of atheism or apostasy um, uh, turn out to be in the Western world, which obviously you, you don't see that entirely as a positive thing. Would you see that rep uh, be replicated in the Muslim world, and would that be a positive thing or not? Or you, uh, what is it? Would you take atheism in the Muslim world, or some traditional Islamic values? <laughs> Otherwise, it'll end up well, being, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, this is something that I had to uh, had disagreements with Christians. I mentioned, you know, you had always been there have always been Christians criticizing various things uh, the way I do things. Because I mean, keep in mind when I when I came out and started blasting right Muhammad in the Quran. Christians back then were trained, don't criticize Muhammad or the Quran, because that will just drive Muslims away. Their churches are training people. They're training Christians in evangelism. They're teaching them, never criticize Muhammad or the Quran, because that Christians Muslim will so never nice. listen to you again. <clears throat> yeah. And I, I actually had to find out. I had to try and figure out where they're getting this from. Where are you getting this from? Right? Because <laughs> Turn the other cheek. <coughs> Be uh, yeah. ultra nice. Uh, yeah, because I mean, Jesus. I mean, he upset people so much they wanted him dead. What do you? Where are you? Where are you getting this idea yeah, from? I, I was able to trace it. I was able to trace it to two sources. When I would ask them, "Where are you getting this from?" Because my experience tells me I start blasting away at Muhammad and the Quran. Muslims can't stay away. They come right at me, and then we we yeah. end up discussing these things, and I discuss their arguments and so on. Uh, and that was my experience with with Nabil and with with uh, others after Nabil and so on. So. Uh, it was I was a little puzzled. Where are you getting this idea from? I was able to trace it down. One, they were hearing it from. Christian missionaries in Muslim countries who come back to the U.S. and then, oh, you're you're a, a missionary in Morocco or something like that. Cool, come talk to our church. And these guys would say, hey, don't ever, don't ever criticize Muhammad or the Quran. Well, that made sense where you were talking, right? It makes sense yeah. if you're in a Muslim, yeah. if you're going to Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. or something, it makes sense. Don't criticize Muhammad or the Quran. It doesn't make that doesn't mean that people back here have to follow that rule. We're in a yeah. we're, we're not in the same boat. So I was like, oh, well, that's a dumb place to get it. And then the other source that was coming from was. Muslim speakers at interfaith events. So they had the interfaith uh, meal at the college campus and the Muslim speaker says, isn't it great that we're building bridges and getting along? Just so you Christians know, if you want to keep these bridges, if you want to keep us having these interactions, make sure you never criticize Muhammad or the Quran, because that will just then we won't have any then we won't want anything to do with you. So keep your keep your you know, keep your Muslim friends happy by never criticizing Muhammad or the Quran. And Christians are telling me this. We got some great advice. I'm, wait, you think that Muslim speaker? is giving you good advice on how to reach Muslims. <laughs> Seriously? That's your source of information. The Muslim, yeah. just let me say it. Just, just let me say it. You're saying what you think is 
this Muslim speaker was giving you good information yeah. on how to, uh, how to talk. Oh my goodness. Right. So it was like, anyway, it, it just occurred to me. Okay. I just have to, I just need to keep blasting away. And eventually people say, no, this is actually, uh, this is actually, uh, very effective blasting away it at is. Islam over the years. And so just kind of, uh, kept at it, kept it. Wait, what, what was the question you asked? What? Cause I, I was no, leading I was... up, I was leading up to that. What was the question? What was the original question? I, I forgot too. Uh, oh yeah. So so um, uh, if uh, this uh, if this rise of apostasy is replicated in uh, the Muslim world. Oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah yeah yeah. What would my thoughts? Yeah. So yeah, because that's what I was leading up to. The the next situation that that arose was since I was blasting away at Muhammad and the Quran, there were Muslims who were leaving Islam. Some of them became Christians, but some of them were becoming atheists. Right. Some of them were becoming some atheists. So most. I start. I start. I don't know. I've heard from a ton of both. I've never actually added up them. Not not as far as the ones who respond after my videos. Right, I would right, say, right. yeah, I don't know. It's I've heard. I've no, heard because from your, a bunch. because uh, your criticism of Islam was never really mixed with preaching of his uh, of Christianity. I mean, all the videos that I saw, like your, I mean, there would be elements of it you could tell that okay, this guy is a Christian. But I think for a very long time, I didn't even know you were actually a Christian. I ju I, I just felt like okay, whatever the points he's making, they're very good, very solid points. So yeah, there. So, just, so yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I made I made videos, but yeah, if you like, I want I wanted my video to be something that an atheist could share with a Muslim. And look, mm -hmm. uh, hey, here's your argument about this. This no, the Quran has not been has not been perfectly preserved. There's no reason for me to bring in my beliefs when I talk about your you guys say perfect preservation and here's the evidence that proves that you're wrong and this is complete nonsense right so yeah but what you just pointed out i got i got blasted for that by some christians who are saying hey if uh if a muslim leaves islam and becomes an atheist why do why would you think that that is a good thing why would you think that's a good thing when he's becoming an atheist and i had to say look e even if you're if your guys are just i'm not just thinking i'm not just thinking in terms of uh what's best salvation. for Christ, yeah. what's best for Christians or salvation and so on. It's, I'm also thinking of, we have a world and we need to live in and Islamic law is bad and oppressive. And I believe in human rights, even for people that you, you don't agree with at all. If you, I disagree with you on every other thing, I believe that people should be treated with, uh, with human rights. And, and so what's, if a Muslim country, if a Muslim country goes from 99% Muslim to, 40% to 40% Muslim and 30% atheist and 10% Christian and 5% this and so on. And you say, ah, but most of those people, most of those people who are leaving Islam were not becoming Christians. Well, hang on. If you have a bunch of different people now, now, and Islam doesn't dominate, then you would actually get a society. They would have to make, they would have to change the rules and the laws. And they'd have mm -hmm. to say, hey, we have a we have a, a very pluralistic society with a bunch of different views and we need different different rules. And then people's rights, uh, rights to believe what they want or rights to leave Islam, uh, freedom of expression, you'd have to start respecting those. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that would be better for the Muslim yeah. world. In other words, I'll, I'll say it here in case you wanted it clear, if you wanted it clear, do I think, do I think, uh, Pakistan yeah. would be better if a if millions of Muslims became atheists. Yes, I do. Yeah, so you like atheists more than Muslims? <laughs> no, no, it's a, no, no, I, 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 no, no. I get, I get the point oh. that you're saying that the society that we'll end up creating yeah. with a more yeah. with so a more diverse could, group of people, it would be it better. Could, it could, it could be a different situation if you had like a a, a violently oppressive atheistic society. Yeah. You said, David, David, like China. Uh, you know, if Legalism. a bunch of people change to different positions, would that be good? Well, yeah, yeah, you, it, it could. I mean, for for example, yeah, I can't imagine any ex any Islam critic be okay with what's happening with Uyghurs and despite being the, the, the Chinese Communist mm -hmm. Party being atheistic uh, I, I haven't heard any ex-Muslim atheist or otherwise uh, or, or any critic of Islam say they are that's good I've heard some uh, radical Hindus saying that but um but, but most yeah, I've, I've seen some that. I've seen some people saying it in like comment section but no one I actually take seriously I've ever yeah said, oh, hey it's a good idea if communists start start uh, putting Muslims in yeah. concentration oh. camps yeah, yeah, no, I get you, I get your sentiment. Okay, uh, Harris, did you ever have you ever had a collaboration interview with Maya Tusi from Tusi TV? No, I, I've actually seen some of his videos. I think he's a Persian Jew. 
British Persian Jew. I think that's who he is. I think I, I, I share a lot of my audience with him. I think, but I haven't. I haven't actually. Uh, have a, I haven't had a conversation with him. I, I think a conversation between you guys will boost your channel. Would be amazing to hear from two great speakers. Thank you very much for including me in the list of great speakers too. Okay, Apostle Aladdin. Um, as president of Woody's, and I'm officially inviting Harris to play Muhammad whenever <laughs> David Wood feels uh, uh, to catch a prophet skit has been promising for. What character am I going to have as president of Woody's? Yeah, what, what, what ca I'll be. Hmm, I'll be. We already have a. Yeah, we already have a Muhammad. <laughs> We've got an awesome <laughs> Muhammad. I, I don't. I don't want to be that. I, I, I still yeah. have some roots connected to Pakistan, so I ain't being that. <laughs> okay, Harris Palmer, David, you have a beautiful test. You have a beautiful testimony, brother. Yeah. Uh, uh, Miss Mantats. We have a lot of David Wood um, um, fans coming here. So obviously, if, if I mispronounce a name or something, I, I I don't know anything about these people. These are these are things I have wondered. He's clearly intelligent and logical. And the one thing I couldn't understand was his Catholicism <laughs> makes sense now. Okay. Well, I, I don't think, I think it may come across as a, as a backhander, but it's not. I think this is, uh, this is actually a compliment. I think it makes sense because I think kind of, I kind of wonder that too. And I've always wondered that, but again, like, as I said, I, I don't really care about people's personal beliefs as much anymore. I, I'm just not interested in that, but it was just something that, okay, had you not been a psychopath, and sorry, I I don't know how you make me say that because like you know you usually people say that as an insult, but it's like you make psychopathy cool too. Um, yeah, anyway, some, some, sometimes it's good to have a psycho on your side. But interesting, uh, I, I'm not actually Catholic, so I don't know where. Don't know oh, where okay, well, okay, maybe Christianity. Yeah, well, I think you just uh, loosely use that term. Um, but yeah, but it it kind of it kind of makes sense. Um, Angel the Angel the Babe. Uh, more grace, gentlemen, praying for more blessings on blessings over your lives. Thank you. Thank you. for. You're starting to sound like AP now. Thank you. Like, where is it? Ah, stop, don't bless me. Uh, I want your, <laughs> no, your, no, I'm stop, stop promoting your beliefs on my channel. No, no, I, I, don't, I don't really care. No, no, I was actually just going to say, and that's why I re-highlighted the point that this is actually something that I always like from certain religious people when they purely out of the goodness of their heart they they just bestow you with good wishes hindus do that a lot without any expectation of i converting to hinduism or christianity it's just purely from out of the goodness of their heart muslims on the other hand although they do say that if you do uh, the only reason i'm being really pushy with my islamic propaganda is because i want you i, I don't want to see you burn in hell so there's some good intent there as well but there's, there's still a bit more uh, vested interest in that because they also believe that if i convert one person to islam then i'm definitely going to heaven so there's still <laughs> you know, there's still a separate re reason behind that too and they keep trying to they, they, they keep using this fear-mongering tactics that if you don't do it you're gonna burn in hell you're gonna burn in hell whereas, whereas this is just a harmless one like i think she as a christian is just totally at peace with i'm sure she'll should love me to convert and say like oh lord i found jesus in my life um but having said that though but it's like okay you know what that's okay but i still have the best wishes for you i, I really like that about christianity and i think I, I, I like hindus do that a lot as well um okay uh elena was just still here she's saying david your life is literally dostoevsky's crime and punishment Ooh, yeah that's actually that's, oh that's... yeah i'm I... I may have shared this uh, at some point somewhere, but uh, I actually came to all my conclusions in life were decided uh, between uh, in the summer between 11th and 12th grade. And I had this issue back then where I would think something and then I would encounter it somewhere and I would take it as like, I, I mentioned that I had like delusional thoughts, but I would take it as like some sort of confirmation from the universe which made no sense according to my worldview it made zero sense that i would hear something and think that this is a message like specifically for me they started asking me about this in the mental hospital um but i i didn't share i didn't share most of when they were asking me questions i had i had the mistaken idea back then when i was in the mental hospital uh i had the mistaken idea that these guys are taught they're trained to be able to spot lies. And so I would be giving away tells. So when they would ask something like they would ask, Hey, 
the, the, the psychiatrist comes in there. And he's like, Hey, David, uh, have you ever, uh, like heard Control something? Yeah. And thought that it was speaking directly to you, like heard a mm -hmm. message and thought that this is directly for you. And that had happened a lot. I gave him some specific example because I didn't want to say no. So I was like, yes, I heard a, I heard a song and it said this. And uh, so I thought that was applying to me. So I pointed that out, but I didn't point out the, the much bigger ones. But the biggest one ever was I had this, uh, I talk about this in, I mean, I talk about the, uh, when I was running from the police one night and I swam a river and went up the other side and then I get into this garden and I walk through the garden and so on. And I talk about this, but I concluded that I'm just like beyond everything else and I don't have to, I don't have to follow the rules that the rest of you uh, follow. And right after I concluded all of that, I read Crime and Punishment, which was assigned for, a, we were assigned summer reading for advanced placement English. So I read Crime and Punishment, which is exactly this, which is was, was exactly the story of Raskolnikov. It doesn't work for him. And so by the end, I was thinking, oh, he's not the one. It's me. This is written mm. for me, which is oh, insane and delusional. It makes zero sense for That's a person a sign who's as well. complete. Yeah. So, uh, so I took this as confirmation. I con I conclude all these things about me. I'm not thinking, oh, Superman or something like that. But then I, everything I conclude is exactly what Raskolnikov believed about himself in Crime and Punishment, and then mm. it failed. And so, yeah, I took that as really screwed up uh, confirmation that I was right. All right. All right, guys. No more super chats, please. I'm trying to end this now. I, I, I want to let David Wood go. Don't away don't too. don't tell don't tell people not to send you money, Harris. It's, uh, it's uh, well, otherwise, otherwise we might be here for another hour because like some they of these can do what they really these people can do what they want with their money. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. All right. Harris, aren't you in the UK? I'm in Illinois and America is pretty bad. I can't tell what's worse, Canada, UK or the USA. What do you guys think? I haven't been to Canada or, or, or the US never and and i'm um, someone who's been to like i don't know i think 20 country 20 countries or something i do live in australia but i do spend a lot of time in the uk um uh, so i think i think the uk has been progressively getting worse that's what i would say uh but i think america is a few years behind I'm not saying that in a conspiratorial sense. I don't. I don't. Gen, I, I don't believe like how Tom, people like Tommy Robinson believe that there's an organized conspiracy to destroy a Western way of life. I don't think it's that. I think these Western politicians have just been spineless to stand up. They just went out. They just went for the 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 easy solution. Let's not rock the boat. All cultures are same. Let's embrace everyone and sing kumbaya. I think that's that's the reason why we are seeing. Uh, I, that's why we're seeing all these Western countries in the in 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 the in, in the terrible state that they are in. Um, so, for example, Biden has eight million people came in the last four years or something. December in, in December, more illegal migrants came in than babies born in the U.S. So, in smaller countries, European countries like the U.K. or France or whatever, so a million people. Germany took what three million people or something. So three million is like it's huge for Germany, and and they have absolutely destroyed the way of life. Absolutely, the white girls scared to go out in in the streets. I I have heard first hand accounts from girls from women who say how scared they are. Uh, it, it just it, it's absolutely mind boggling that how could any how could anyone allow that? But now I'm seeing, but America is so much bigger. It's probably the continental Europe itself. So it's so you would think that okay, one million people, okay, again, like it'd be so gradual that people wouldn't. Wouldn't, wouldn't see it or wouldn't notice it but what biden has done in the last couple of years or so it's just i think i think we, we, we tommy robinson says that we're headed towards a civil uh, headed towards civil unrest i think the way the, the, so yeah look australia is probably the only country that's actually absolutely safe for now australia maybe because we're so far away our border control is still very strict and harsh um it's only controlled migration whatever like whatever we are short by if we, if we have skill shortage shortage then even then i think australia is subliminally australia doesn't take any like uh, out of top 10 pakistan is number 10 and all the other nine um countries uh immigrants for, uh, coming from the countries they're non-muslims so mm -hmm. um so I, I i don't know if they're doing that on purpose but i'm happy with that i'm not complaining but the rest of the world i don't know david i don't know how do you see this like this whole migration crisis no, as far as uh, because <clears throat> he just asked, hey, America's pretty bad. What's worse? <laughs> okay, so 
I think you could argue that any of them are worse depending on what the situation is. Like as far as the situation with Islam, the UK would be the worst as far oh. as uh, government. I mean, the government in Canada is going, it's, it's different from what's happening in the U S but it's really, really bad as far as like polarization and so on and setting everyone against each other. I think USA is, uh, is the worst on that list. So yeah, it kind of depends on what the criteria are. Yeah, I I interpret it totally differently. I I, I just saw it from from the migra migrants' point of view. I, I I didn't I didn't think. Oh yeah, you, then UK UK. If it's just yeah, yeah. if it's UK Islam the coming, then UK yeah. Like like no. the, like in in the in the US in the US. If you're talking about Islamic, I mean US has has been pretty steady at one percent Muslim mm -hmm. population, um, because as far as conversions as as many people are are leaving Islam as are converting to it, so that doesn't change anything. And so it's just migration and just not taken in as many as other places are. Yeah. Uh, Soham Dutta just became a member. Thank you very much, Soham. Uh, sends a super chat as well. There's a study that says Islam will have the highest number of followers by 2050. Do you believe that is likely? Now, this comes from that 2016 or 17 Pew survey that uh -huh. did not that did not acknowledge. How many ex-Muslims are going to be, or maybe they they did. There was an there was another survey as well that sh that said that twenty three percent of Muslims born in in America are ex-Muslims now. They didn't use that term back then. Mm -hmm. So I think I think that survey is very old. I don't think that survey was credible um, because all the other accounts that we see, I I don't think that's going to happen. People may remain culturally Muslims, but unlike Christianity or ex-Christians. Ex-Muslims somehow, once they come out of Islam, they they don't become uh, uh, indifferent to Islam. They actually become hostile to Islam. So I think I think uh, by 2050, that Pew survey, in my opinion, I don't know what David's opinion is. I I, I don't I don't think that survey would live up to its expectations uh, in 2050. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would say that's that's going to be obsolete. So that was based primarily on just looking at numbers and looking birth at Muslim birth Muslim birth rates and so on, saying here's how rapidly this is growing. So if this if this continues, uh, then what happens? Yeah, they're not factoring in. I mean, they're they're factoring in people who are leaving Islam, which in the past was far fewer than it is now. Um, this so this is before really the avalanche of apostasy and this mm. uh, desperation kicking in. It's also not factoring in, I mean, this is before, you know, finding out, hey, keep in mind, when this study was done, if you asked, uh, hey, what's the Muslim population of Iran? Well, it was pretty darn close to 100%, isn't it? What's it actually? 40%. So you're not, it's not taking into account secret ex-Muslims. Um, yeah, I would be. There's no way Islam isn't collapsing by 2050. But I'm or, or exploding by 2050. But I'm but I'm curious to why we haven't had any more major surveys by Pew or Gallup. I think there was one Gallup in 2018 or something. But it'd be really interesting to see some new fresh numbers. We've seen these I little. Would, I really want to see yeah. Yeah. Um. I, I, yeah. We need a credible survey, especially after the explosion of this ex-Muslim movement in India as well. Like, uh, it's just it'd be very interesting. That would be a major slap and, in the face of all these dais. And especially, especially once some of these countries have to change their laws about being an ex-Muslim to where it becomes okay to be an ex-Muslim, because then ex-Muslims can actually come out of the closet, and if it becomes acceptable for them to actually have discussions and proclaim that uh that islam is not true or that they're an atheist or a christian or something like that i think you're going to get it a lot more and i think there are other factors like uh just over the past couple of years with the changes in saudi arabia um you know 2018 women get the right to drive but then now bikini beaches and legalizing alcohol in places and well, having these guy Having Iggy Azalea, guy. yeah, I mean, he might be. Uh, having Iggy Azalea, she's twerking on stage while singing "Worship the Goddess" and so on. It's like one. This shows you that the the country has changed, but it's also going to make future change. Um, mm. uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna open doors for future change as well.
but it could also happen like with MBS, okay, that because he's a one man show, he's a dictator, so you know, he can take his country in whichever direction he wants, depending on how firmly he believes in whatever he believes in. But what about other countries? Like we've seen Malaysia just, uh, they, they just um, legislated five, 15 new laws which go against the constitution of Malaysia. And there is, and they are more Sharia compliant. There's 15 new uh, laws. So before things get better, I, I fear they could actually get worse before they start getting better, and they might double oh. down on ex-Muslims and all these people. Oh, that that's definitely going to happen in certain places. It is. And this is what we were when we we're talking about, uh, you know, Iran being in a panic mode, and hey, how much, we have to start all these fights now and rally people around Israel. And this connecting to the Dawa guys thumping their chest, we're going to run the world and so on. Yeah, you're going to have governments who who try to deal with the avalanche of apostasy uh, through laws yeah, and so right. on. But I, I think I think that all eventually collapses. And uh, yep, yeah. I think it's inevitable. Moon cow, it makes me happy thinking about living with fellow children of. God like David Wood in the future. I hope one day AP will open his heart to Jesus. Thank you for sharing your testimony, Ohana. I thank God. Okay, well, oh wow, well, he says it about AP. Uh, says it about me. AP, but not about you. It's like hey, he we don't care about he, Harris. He, he, we he, like he, AP, he, but he, not Harris. He doesn't care about me. Doesn't want, doesn't care about my salvation. Once uh, again, smiling. they forgot about. They forgot <laughs> yeah. about. They forgot about Harris. <laughs> Infidel Noodle, drop the skincare routine. Mm, is that for, that must be for David Wood. He's got a better skin than I do. Um, Are you joking? You're glowing, have... dude. <laughs> what about this? You I can't like get rid of this. You look like to... you're from a, from a <laughs> commercial, something like that. Right. <laughs> I'll drop it, please. Um, don't drop the skincare me. routine. <laughs> um, Rasai saying, Hindus in 1947 and today's Pakistan 15%, even in Bangla, they're down to 5% from near 30%. Wonder why easy and you know it. They both are ground-based societies. Please bring out your rationality. Harris. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know. I made a video about this. Go look it up. Harris Sultan, Hindu percentage in Pakistan. Look that up. I've, I've, I've given you actual numbers. Um, so yeah, you don't, you don't know what you're talking about. Thoughts, MBS might be an atheist yeah. ch changing Islam. I reckon, I, 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 I know you, you, thank you for covering my, uh, giving your reaction to my video. Um, I genuinely believe, I think he's our guy and I think he's, and, and I, okay, maybe he, 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 probably he's not, I don't know, but, but I really enjoy the fact now we can throw that in the faces of all these Dava Gandhis. I think only Daniel and Kikachu is probably the only person who's called out MBS. And that means he's probably never going to go to Saudi Arabia. But I have noticed all these other, and even, even in India and Pakistan, all these big name Muslim apologists, they don't say anything to MBS because they know that they want to go to Saudi Arabia for Umrah or for the Hajj. And the moment they go there, <laughs> he doesn't care about them. They're going to be arrested. So look how scared that they are. They're scared of our guy. You don't want me to. You don't want me to come to Pakistan. Well, you can't come to Mecca because my guy is there. <laughs> and I just enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. Uh, I, I I can't make any decisive declaration, but I would say it totally fits the evidence really well and may fit the evidence better than any other position uh, mm. as far as he's an atheist or closet atheist or not. Yeah. Uh, we're going to give you money. Yeah, we're, pr we're proud of that. And no offense, Apostle Aladdin should have put a trigger warning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And with that uh, very nice, generous super chat. Thank you very much i think we're done with our super chats david wood it's been an absolute honor pleasure and i got to learn i i i, I got to have a bit of an insight in in your brain um and i i don't think i don't has anyone ever spoken to you uh, or or in this depth before and connected your psychopathy with your conversion story or rebirth or rever reversion story or however you, you you call that has anyone ever done that because i think i didn't i definitely didn't know about this but these were some sniggering questions that that have been trouble that that have been just um annoying me like i i want to ask that had you not been um a, a psychopath then would you have been would you have converted to christianity or then that means like you need it not everyone else would need it and then in, eventually you are just a product of your circumstances and your experiences which made you into which made you 
uh, to be who you are. So th those were just my questions. But anyway, have any last words and let's wrap it up. Um, well, so I guess the, uh, I guess the, the overarching question was, uh, should ex-Muslim atheists be talking to Christians or collaborating Ooh, yes. with Christians and so on? Um, and we, we've, we've touched on everything in this discussion, but, uh, yeah, you can you can have levels of disagreement and and agreement. And uh, I think one level is, hey, Christians, atheists, uh, Jews, Hindus, we're all kind of on the same side of the Islam issue because Islam wants all of us. Some of us in different ways. You're actually in uh, more danger if you're an ex-Muslim than other things or uh, critics of Islam and so on. So. I have I have absolutely no clue why it wouldn't just be taken for granted that everyone who's on the same side of an issue can agree on the issue and can say, hey, whatever else we disagree about, we all agree we are we cannot let that get control over us because that wants to either kill or subjugate all of us and just just can't happen. So we can totally be on the same page and in different contexts, we can uh, we can uh, we can argue about everything else. No, yeah, I think. Yeah, I wanted to say something to that as well, and I totally forgot um, it, with respect to why so many uh, ex-Muslims are upset with AP, and I want to upset them too. Um, that hey, look, I can, I can, I can have a very respectful dialogue with David Wood, whom I've actually always respected. You, by the way, I, I never had any, I, I never saw anything where I would have a major conflict with you, other than just the surface level argument of, oh, well, he's, he's a Christian. Yeah. Okay. What's well, so my mother is Muslim. Should I not respect her? Should I not love and respect, talk to her? So it's not that, but I think it more, so it comes from a state of mind that people who are always in this, in this mode of hostility towards people with differing opinions, because I just, I just don't have it in me to argue with any person of faith to tell him that, Hey, you are stupid. I'm you're, you're forever going to be my enemy and I'm never going to talk to you or, or I'm always going to you know try to crush you etc I just don't have that in me maybe I had it when I was um uh, you know at the peak of my atheistic journey or whatever uh, I just don't have that in me the only reason why I still talk about Islam and it's, and now more I only just speak about Islam not because of Islam, but because of the behavior of Muslims. That's the driving factor. As I said, like I, it breaks my heart when I see um, the UK, when I see these people running amok, when these davagandists, how they, are, they how, how they are almost unopposed propagating their bullshit worldviews, and 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 naive people of the West are just falling for it. And 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 guess who's falling for their propaganda? P these woke people who actually have absolutely no religion in their life in their lives they're basically the the younger me <laughs> i'm like whoa are you like i mean we can we can be that stupid we can be that stupefied so so i i, I yeah you're right like i mean if i i, I would like we should all strive to find more common ground than points of disagreements and then for, for example if i was talking to a muslim if i had a hostile approach to begin with i think the conversation would have gotten derailed with him, and it could have gotten derailed with you as well. But it, but it didn't. I mean, you, you, we have totally different worldview on how we look at how our universe came into existence, etc. But it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I mean, you're you're going to be dead in I don't know forty, fifty years. I'm going to be dead in twenty, thirty years. I don't know. So at the end, none of that is going to matter. Let's just live our lives to the best of our abilities. And unless you want to say on that note. I think we should end, right, David? Oh, by the way, Miss uh, Mentes sent a message like, um, "I think I didn't finish my sentence." Yeah, she didn't mean any backhander. She genuine, she she genuinely respect. Uh, I think it's in relation to the points she made that she always wondered that you being so rational and 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 you make sense and about everything, <laughs> then why did you convert to? Or why are you a Christian? Um, so she's saying no genuine respect. I think, and I think it's it makes sense. Makes sense. All yeah, right, people. Miss, uh, yeah. yeah, Miss uh, Mentes, you, you you don't have to worry about uh, hurting my feelings about stuff. Uh, <laughs> I deal with jihadis all day, threatening to uh, murder oh, me and my family. Oh, so it's like, oh God, I wanted to ask you that as well. So you obviously get attacked left, right, and center by these pathetic individuals. And as a policy, I reckon that's the best thing that you've ever done. 
that if you're going to come after my family and come up with these violent, disgusting attacks on your uh, on on your late child, on your family, um, it's so pathetic and so lame that I know I, I know a lot of Muslims would probably cringe on that too, but they feel emboldened that they feel like it's, they're going to do it. But there's only one way to tackle these people, and which is like you end up disrespecting the Quran. So uh, does yeah, that work? And- though? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Not 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 with everyone, but as a uh, as a deterrent, it works remarkably well. Um, mm. But I have to say, <clears throat> all these guys, so like you know, they'll they'll either blast me based on my past. Oh, you tried to kill your dad and stuff like this. Like, yeah, where you been? I got I got videos all over the place about this. What do you yeah. like? Why are you? It's like a gotcha for them. Yeah. And uh, so the the most common one now is, ha ha, your son died. I get that. I get that left and right. But oh. these guys are terrible, terrible tacticians. They just don't get it. I mean, if you think at what I'm doing, I'm laser focused at blasting away at the foundations of their religion. And not just all at once. You're not destroying <laughs> this stuff all at once. It's over a period of years. Like right now, mm. right now we're dealing with uh, Ramadan and I'm messing around with Ramadan. Hey, why? Well, well, but I, it's not it's not just a one time thing. I'm giving people tools to blast away for years to come at the foundations of a pillar of Islam. And these these guys, I don't know, these guys on social media think, oh, but we made fun of your son for di-. like what what? Like how in other words, how do you not get this? I'm insignificant and inconsequential in the like grand scheme of things. Nothing in Christianity or anything else depends on me. Hmm. Or on my son. Everything depends on Muhammad and the Quran and the the foundations of Islam for your ideology. So it's just this weird situation where I'm blasting away at the foundations (laughs) of the religion and they're responding by, ha ha, we insulted you. And it's in my mind like, oh, this is hilarious. This is hilarious that they think we're in this cycle. I'm blasting away at things that really, really matter in their ideology and they're doing they're taking completely irrelevant pot shots at any random thing that they can come up with in my life. Anyway, I I, I find it absolutely hilarious. And matter of fact, as soon as as soon as they start as soon as they started on that, as soon as they started down that road of, hey, I'm going after Muhammad. Well, we're going to threaten you. Uh, okay, you can threaten me. A, you can threaten me a billion times. It uh, doesn't as matter as if we didn't have. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant, yeah. right? I'm what the damage the damage that we're doing to the foundations of your religion that matters to the Uh entire world that matters to history that really matters everything they do in response is like completely irrelevant in the grand scheme of things so the point is they 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 lost the moment they entered into that cycle right there where i go after stuff that matters in their ideology and they blast stuff that it just doesn't it just doesn't i think ap it 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 actually works as well because i know like again there's a quranic verse as well don't abuse those others because they might in turn abuse your uh, yeah. real real god but i think it worked with a, a, a ap as well because when they were doing apus apus in mm-hmm. that last debate with daniel yeah Pikachu, and he would he just say, Mopus, say yeah. Mopus. <laughs> yeah. Mopus. he immediately changed his tone <laughs> yeah or uh or or hijab hijab when he was i mean he was coming out with an entire campaign it was hey we're gonna go after their wives family members just, yeah. ta- just take it taking a bite out of the quran they all they stopped they stopped right there so it does work yeah Wow. And, 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 and I, and I have to say, I have to say it could be, it could be massively more effective. Um, I think, I think, uh, their actions leading to a backlash directly against Muhammad and the Quran would be more of a deterrent than like capturing and, and killing terrorists and start locking up terrorists or something like that it would be. So if you, if there were. If they went and killed a bunch of people for the Charlie Hebdo cartoons, if everyone in the entire world said we're we're posting Muhammad cartoons for the next year uh, and something like that, I think that would be more of a deterrent mm-hmm. than uh, than anything else. But yeah, people haven't what? people haven't caught on to how how much how how much power they have in dealing with Islam. Because I mean, think about what they think about what we've actually been doing. For all these years, there would be a terrorist attack like 9-11. What does every news agency do? Oh, let's get, we don't want to be, we don't want to come across as Islamophobes. So let's get Muslim preachers on here to tell us what Islam is really like. And, and to show that Islam doesn't support these things. And you get a wave of conversions. Islam is a religion of peace. And, yeah, and you get a wave, that, yeah. you get a wave of conversions after it. And so what's the message you're sending? What's the message that the West 
sent for pretty much 20 years. The more you come after us, the more you say you're going to destroy us, the more terrorist attacks you launch, the more we're going to defend and protect your religion to show how tolerant we are. And so you're sending the wrong message. You're sending the wrong message. You're, you're actually incentivizing it. Kill us and we will promote your religion more. Kill us more and we'll promote him even more to show how talent we are. And it's like, guys, you're sending the, the exact wrong message here. It should be, hey, you're going to kill people. We're going we're gonna to mock and ridicule your prophet to, a, to an even greater degree until you stop. Yeah. All right, people. David Wood, thank you very much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. I'm so happy that we spoke. Um, and we'll probably do it again at some point. Um, I think I'll, I'll try. A AP is another one very hard to reach out to. No, he's not. I'm just joking. I'll, I'll send him a message. All right, people. Until next time, ta-da.